always feel funny when someone like you has been on like real sets and stuff comes <laughs> over and I'm gonna sit here like, let me fix my camcorder, get it all focused. This is more and more what's <laughs> happening, dude. The I know. Self production it's and, crazy. and yeah, I think like that's the dirty un untold story of this strike is that like residuals and AI, which are so important and, and oh, right, yeah. but people are gonna start the tech and the AI part of it is gonna make it so that you make your own stuff and you yeah. get it direct directly to your audience and that's the future, you know? Yeah. I think that's awesome though, to be honest. Like that's yeah. for for the creators, the artists. I agree. Stuff. Which totally we just started our conversation, woo everybody. Woo Welcome to Drinks with Johnny today with Taryn Killam. How are you doing today, man? I'm excellent. I am it is happy so, to be in your home, your beautiful is, home. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And it's so nice to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> Remember. Yes. That would be great if I just did the Chris Farley to you the whole time. Hey, hey, that was yeah. awesome. Remember that time when you were did like you? on the Californians? <laughs> I'm yes, a big yeah. fan, man. I, I Thanks, am so, man. so awesome Appreciate to have that. you here, man. Thank you so much. I'm, yeah. I'm honored to be here. I'm glad Sam reached out. Um, as you know, my bro is an epic Avenged Sevenfold fan. So this is like when I saw that love this it. was your show, I was like, I'd love to get these guys together. Yeah. yeah. And we did. We did. We did it. We did it. We did the damn thing. Yeah, man. So, man, thank you so much for, again for I'm being happy. down here. Yeah. Let's start off with the drinks. Please. So you said you're a whiskey guy. So... Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with 291. No. They are, are they're uh, a Colorado-based bourbon. Okay. Um, uh, I tend to like it quite a bit. Great. Because it has a little bit more of a bite to it, and I'm more, I'm more of a scotch guy. Okay. So, but it's, it is more bourbon, so it's somewhere in between. So I'm just going to give you a Great. little guy here. Do you know the qualifications for a bourbon? What makes it a bourbon? Uh, it has to be in off the Kentucky uh, River, correct? Yeah, you, uh, you know, you just were telling me before we hit record well, that you did it. Well, what's a cool, because this is a bourbon, yes, you said? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what they call it. Call so it this is America's spirit. That's mm -hmm. part. Of, the reason I like whiskey in particular is that it's not something you can make and like produce overnight. It's not moonshine and even vodka. You can do like a, a, a clean spirit and a neutral spirit and bottle it the next day. You're drinking time. Right. Like, I love that about whiskey. You're drinking a story, right? And bourbon specifically is America's spirit, has to be at least 51% corn, has to be between above 40% and 52% or something like that. You said this is 62, so maybe it's higher. Um, yeah. ABV has to be aged in unused white American oak barrels. That one I didn't know. That one I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, and, and charred. Um, yeah, and then the mixture therein is great because Blanton's is probably my favorite. Blanton's? I don't know if I've had Blanton's. Blanton's Kentucky bourbon, it's great. It comes like in an ore bottle. Um, really, oh, really nice. I have it's had got that the little one. horse on top. Yeah, I have horse. had that one. The one you yes. said, I, I call it looks kind of like a grenade. But yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. holy grenade, the holy yeah. hand grenade. <laughs> I've had that one. 100%. Well, you seem to know about your Cheers. bourbon. Why don't you tell me what you think about this one? Oh, we, gotta, nice. we gotta clean glasses though, man. Cheers. 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 Yeah, that's nice. Mm. That'll do it. I feel the bite and I feel like, I feel which is like you get a peaty, a peatier vibe. Exactly. But it's still pretty smooth. Like yeah. it's a thin liquid, you know what I mean? It's not, I find like when things haven't been proofed down too much, it can be a little chunkier, a little heavier in the mouth. And this is very light in the mouth. Totally. But then you get that heat, it's nice. Exactly. That, I'm, so glad we're talking alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. I mean, I, my, as my brother knows, I'm new to the. I didn't start drinking till I was 30. Okay. I wow, that's late. Super late. My honeymoon was the first time I was ever like even tipsy. Where was your honeymoon at? We went to a small little island called Petite Saint Vincent in the Caribbean. Oh. So like you fly to. Um, I think you fly to Barbados, and then you fly to St. Regis, and then you take a boat to Petite St. Regis. Okay. It was great. And we were on the island, and I hadn't uh, partaken before, but I got really sick one week at SNL, like bad, like congested, like waking up, <laughs> like stuffed up. And NyQuil wasn't doing it, and normally NyQuil's like a miracle tonic for me, particularly like being a teetotaler, straight edge guy. But one of our crew members was like, yeah, just have a shot of whiskey. Because I was telling him about it. I was like, oh, it's rough. This, these are long nights. I'm like, have a shot of whiskey. Yeah, you don't drink, right? Yeah, have a <laughs> shot of whiskey. It'll knock you out. And so I went, I went so to good. Del Frisco Grill, <laughs> the 30 Rock, and I ordered a, a double jack. 
Mm. And I downed Jack it. Jack Daniels is always the first whiskey everyone tries. It's oh. just, yeah, it's just it that gateway tastes. whiskey. I love it still. Mm. I, I still do. I got, I got a, I like, I got, I don't not like anything, and I'm not trying to talk anybody out of business, but uh, a competitor to Jack Daniels, Dickel. Have you ever had oh, Dickel? Oh, I love George Dickel. I love Number 12 Sour Daniels. Mash. Oh, it's so good. And if you go to BevMo, no, I'm not, this is not an endorsement, this is just a passion. A number 12 <laughs> Sour Mash Dickel, three bucks cheaper than Jack Daniels. Well, three bucks. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm just saying, for a, for a good flavor, you know, for a good flavor, good. like mid-shelf uh, I like George Dickel on the road. We would uh, often, we'd get it on the, on the rider for a little while, and we'd be on the bus, and we'd just like, you know, we're trying to watch our weight out there, you know, I don't know why, but you know. <laughs> uh, then you get older and you don't care anymore. Uh, but like you started to watch your weight when you're you know, a little younger and stuff. And it's yeah. like, well, straight whiskey is less calories. We'll just pass the bottle around. And it was always George Dickel because yeah. it is a very smooth, like yes. one you could pass around. <laughs> hey kids, Hi. you can sit around the table <laughs> and pass around a bottle and just but keep pulling off of it. Piano, guitar, and bass lessons first. <laughs> put in your hour first, uh, and then yeah, put in your ten thousand hours exactly, or something get your like that. Gladwell, that's, that's, uh, yeah. Ten thousand hours, man. Um, yeah, so I so said it, it kind of would, and I was doing Jack Daniels at the honeymoon, and it and I wasn't like feeling the effects. It was never that. It became a social thing. I'd do like a Jack and Coke, and then my wife asked the bartender. She's like. What's something that you like to make that nobody ever asks for? And he made her a mudslide. And I love milkshakes. And it was just <laughs> a boozy milkshake. So like yeah. four mudslides later. My mom loves mudslides. Oh, well, now you're speaking. I want to hang with Yeah, now you got Sam over there. I want to hang a big, it's all about frothy, sweets. creamy, good, yeah. sweet drink. It is so gross to oh. me. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> it really is. I can't, I can't handle it. No? Like, the way he drinks, I'm just like, that is... He'll drink like so. There's this bamboo stuff, which is absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a rum cream banana liqueur thing. Okay, like it's, it's really delicious. Yeah, but not straight in a glass of ice, <laughs> just chugging it. And he's over here projectiling into that very sink back there behind yeah. you uh, after a night of drinking this. And I'm just sitting there. A little high, a little drunk, and I'm like just trying to talk business to him the whole time he's while he's literally sitting, he's literally <laughs> sitting where you're sitting, yeah. watching TV, going, you know what we should do? And I'm like, stop talking. To me. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was just so late. sweet on the way out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think by the, I think it was so late at night at that point they were running like the infomercials, yeah. and I'm like, we should pay to make an infomercial for drinks with Johnny. <laughs> Literally. I wonder. I wonder now, like how, I mean, how affordable if, we, that, if you make it, like what we were yeah. talking about before we started rolling here. How much can those ad spends be? Like, it can't cost that much money to, totally. to do that anymore. At, at two in the morning on like yeah. traditional, like and what's you, called legacy network TV. Now. Yeah, and then yeah. you could tell everyone like that follows you on social media to like tune in Stay at that night and watch it. Watch it. And like, we'll put clues in yeah. the thing and stuff. Yeah, be a, not see bad. a QR code that'll lead you to. I need new. a director though. Yeah, hit me up, man. <laughs> hit me up. I'm glad I'm here. I know where you live now. Yeah, that's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> I know where your bar is, Johnny. <laughs> well, you're always welcome to the bar. Thank but you, speaking man. on your directing, though. Yes. I did just watch uh, Killing Gunther. Okay, thank you. A couple weeks ago when, uh, when we knew you were coming over, I was like, oh, let's check out some of the stuff I haven't seen, mostly from SNL and The Heat and, and uh, Single Parents is where oh, I predominantly cool. know you from. Yeah. And then uh, I'm a fan of all those things. And then I saw Arnold was in this one, and I was like, yeah. Okay, I gotta watch this movie. And yeah. it was on Tubi. Everyone's on Tubi. Um, and for free, I hope, yeah. on Tubi. Good. Yeah, it's You're for good. free on Tubi. <laughs> uh, so I watched it, and uh, I just wanted to know, like, first of all, you got Arnold to do, like, straight comedy. Yeah. Like, that was, that was sick, and he did a great job. So, Thank like, you. As a director, I was just curious, like, how did you approach that? How did you get Arnold? Like, walk me through yeah. uh, how he is a part of this movie. It was, it was uh, yeah, unbelievable. And, and thank you for watching it. And I would say, like, you know, the 30 minutes or less that he's in the film is probably the part I'm most proud of. Because this was like, you know, when you're trying to get self-produced stuff and you're trying to, to raise the money, you're like, what can I accomplish with what I have access to? Mm -hmm. Like, with my friends and so... I really wrote that film thinking like, this is something I'll shoot when I'm off SNL in the summer with like, you know, cameras that we can rent that we can afford and it'll be fun and we'll improvise and stuff. And we put out offers for this role at the end that was literally written as a cameo. I mean, it was literally written like, you see him in the last three scenes and that's it. And I reached out to people that had hosted SNL that I'd had good shows with or had a good time with. 
And so like, <laughs> you know, we shot, we, we aimed high, we went out to Tom Hanks and like I, I, I filmed all these like offer videos. Okay. Like, hey, what's going on? It's Taryn, remember me, remember this? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> And you just send those out? I sent three of them out. I sent okay. one to Tom, I sent one to John Malkovich. Ooh. And then I sent one to Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Because he had hosted yeah. and I'd had a really fun week with him and we got along pretty well. And Bruce kind of took his time with it and it was like, maybe you will, maybe you won't, and ultimately said no. But uh, Bruce and Arnold were rep by the same team, same agents. And they're like, you know, Arnold's looking to do some comedy and get back into it. Would you consider? <laughs> Would you consider I remember you? Movie? Would you consider <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger in your movie? Like, what if you just roll back? Eh, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Malcolm the bust. The governor. Yeah, you're, you're from California too. So exactly. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, we grew up watching all like Conan and Predator and oh, yeah. Terminator. I mean, like, I, I, I think Arnold was in a category like at that point. I was like, I've never met him, and no way would he consider this. So when I talked to him a few times, like my favorite, my favorite thing was the first time that we ever like spoke face to face was via, via Zoom, via FaceTime. And I'm in the offices at SNL and it's a writing night and I get the call because they say he's gonna call you. I'm like, hey, I gotta go, I gotta find a place to, that it looks professional. And, <laughs> and like I get back to my office and I close the door and uh, his assistant was there. He's like, hey Taryn, how's it going? You know, I'm Pete and I'm gonna hand you over to Arnold now. And I was like, okay, cool, thanks. And he hands the phone over, and it's Arnold, cigar. Has to have the cigar. Has to He's have at cigar. his place in Idaho. He's in his office at his desk with an oil painting of him from Pumping Iron <laughs> behind him. Yes. And I'm just That like, makes me so happy. I can picture the scene. This, this is, is exactly amazing. what I wanted. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I was like, hey, how are you? Good to see you. And I was like, hey, hey, how are you, Ar Arnold? And thank you so much for reading and taking time. He's like, yeah, no problem, no problem. I was like, you look great, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, uh, oh, he, he said it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's the before. This is the after. <laughs> and I was like, I love this man yeah. more, and I didn't think yeah. that was possible. Dude. That was so, so cool. And then working with him, like once you once you guys are on set, what was it? Full was that pro, like? yeah. Full pro, man. Like really, got to give it up because I like there was a lot of plates to juggle, and it was definitely the most ambitious thing I've ever taken on because because I was at the helm of of it, um, and him showing up, I just wanted to you know show someone whose career I've admired, revered, and who's brought me so much joy that I'm taking this very seriously and I'm gonna work hard for you and I wanna protect you at all costs and make you look good and make you have fun. So we worked really hard like in terms of his arrival because I think we ended up having him for seven days, which is great, which is more than it was originally supposed to be. And he, he was freaking prepared. He came with his own alts. He came with like what, his own, uh, like alt jokes else? or punchlines oh, for okay. things. He's like, oh, this is the good yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, not, I'm yeah, not yeah. in the industry. I don't know what the fuck he just said. He, he, and he had time for everybody too, but he was also a master of like ending a conversation too. You know what I mean? Like he would yeah. get everybody their time. He's like, yeah, I'm glad you like the movie. Yeah, I'm glad. I, so I nice bet you. Hair. I bet you that came from his politician career, not yes. his acting career. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. Yeah. I, I mean, it was. He was. Everyone always feels like they like when you talk when you hear about politicians that everyone really likes, right? Mm. They, you always hear about, man, they were so great about the time they gave everyone, really made me feel like, yes. like they were listening and stuff. Yes. And I'm sure they are. I'm sure Arnold was listening. I'm just saying like, yeah. they, I think it's a certain skill that you have to have as a politician. I wonder because before he was the governor of California, <laughs> he was the biggest, he and I would argue still is the biggest action movie star of all time. Right, I mean, he, he is, he is. I. I and so I, I wonder Stallone, if you're doing... It was always the, the, the debate. Was you Stallone, think? And then, Arnold was a little more, I think. No, I think Arnold, Arnold as much. an actor. I agree. Arnold as an actor. But the, the thing you always have to like creep up in there is like Stallone like did all those Rockies. He, the Rocky he did all and the, the Oscar. He know, did like, the Rocky, he did the Oscar. He's got like that prestige foundation. Right, right, But right. I think franchise for franchise. I it's think it's not daughter. a fair I, I agree. I, I, you know what I always wanted? I don't know about you, Sam, when I was a kid. I wanted them to make the Contra movie with Sylvester Stallone oh. and Arnold Schwarzenegger. As it looked like him what so a much dream. on that cover. What uh. a dream. And by the way, with AI technology, that's the project we all deserve. Uh. If, come on, come if, on, Hollywood. If Silicon Valley <laughs> and big tech wants to win this vote, wants to win me over, uh. use your AI technology to produce a Contra movie 
with Arnold and Sly. Sly gets the laser, Arnold gets the spread. He needs the spread, spread. Arnold gets spread. Mm -hmm. How do you work in up, down, left, right, left, right? Yeah. Oh, they'll find a way. They you make it funny. Do. You make it funny. Oh, it's a code. Yeah, there's some ticking clock. There's a bomb, clock. There's a bomb to, yeah. to deactivate. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. That so let's start. So let's start. I'm trying. My fingers are too huge. The little red buttons are so small. I think you could win this. And then Kathy Ireland comes in. Do you oh. know what I mean? Just make it like, like, like pure <laughs> early 90s, late 80s vibe. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. How hot was Kathy Ireland then? I think it's probably still a very beautiful woman. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I just mean like... Uh, uh, she was just, yeah. Just, she was, just she like was the poster. Everywhere. She was, was like, I, I'm an 80s kid, like mm -hmm. 80s into 90s, and like, yeah. The Farrah Fawcett of the set, like, that was, was Kathy, that was Kathy for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The cutouts in, yeah. every, in every liquor store next yes. to the Bud Light stands. Necessary everything. Roughness. Ooh, yeah. that was a great pull. Yeah, bro. Necessary Roughness. Yeah, bro. <laughs> well, speaking of that, like real quick, well, yeah. uh, obviously we talked before we started here, you mentioned the AI thing and the, and the, yeah. the strike that's happening right now. I mean, you're part of, you're part of Hollywood, man. So like, yeah, dude. Um, I'm the I know problem. You <laughs> <laughs> You got me. All right. <laughs> hey, this is a good gotcha interview. You're right. You're right. <laughs> no, man. I so when I first heard about it a little while ago, because mm. I don't, I don't have my fingers on the pulse of news. I just, I okay. gave up on that a long time ago. Um, but when I heard about it, I was like, oh, what the hell is this about? You know, as a musician, we're part of the same like uh, SAG yeah. stuff and everything. Get all that stuff sent. Yeah. And I was just a little curious, and then I found out what it was, a, somewhat of what it was about, but I'm sure you have a little bit more insight, so I wanted to ask, because what, to my knowledge, it has to do with, you know, now that AI is, is upon us and, and they can regenerate anything, Yes, it has to do with licensing someone's actual likeness in movies and stuff, correct? Yeah, yeah, in terms of the regulation of it, I think that's what the unions are asking for, that if a, if an, if a robot, if an AI robot, which is a derivative technology at this point, they're mm -hmm. not generating their own content from scratch and its own experience, it's pulling from which, everything that's ever been written. Which I'd say, not yet. Not yet, and <laughs> I, you could argue, and I think AI companies would, that that's what humans do. You read things you like, you see things you like, and you pull from that, and that inspires yeah. you to write that. But right now, the technology is such that it is still very directly derivative, and I feel like if you watch a lot of the content that's being made, this trailer, like there was that great Catsby, you know what I mean? And you're seeing actual shots from Baz Luhrmann's Great Gatsby, right, with like mutated mm -hmm. computer faces, and there's an argument that that's parody and it's for comedy and there's parody law and look what Weird Al has created in the music industry right, under, right, under right. that protection. But I think what it is, is that if there's not a human soul, if there's not a human being, and like AI is a very, in my opinion, like uh, narrow avenue in a huge boulevard of issues for the entertainment industry. Okay. Um, you're talking about residual minimums. You're talking about trying to make your health care because What's hard to explain to the world at large is like, I think part of the narrative gets spun that like, oh, writers and actors want more money for it. And they're making, they, all they do is play, you know, whatever it is. That's usually what it is. Anytime in, in right. the entertainment industry, anyone, yes. that's, I mean, it happens in sports, it happens in yeah. music. Anytime that the artists, let's say, or creators are on strike, it's often spun. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. That it's, it's all about money, which, by the way, guys, it's usually not that much about the money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about, I mean, it's yeah, about, it, the it's future the money generation. Again, but it's like, it's also, yeah, and it's about the next people coming up, exactly. making sure they're still going to have favorable deals and not exactly. get screwed over. That's, but not, that's not it. everybody makes a million dollars on every production either. There's no. different levels of everything. There's a plenty of bands or, or comedians or actors that, are struggling to make their bills. Just because you know them doesn't mean they're rich by any means. You know yeah, of course. And, 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 and uh, you also have to factor in like, that's why the bigger names that are getting the millions of dollars will speak out on their behalf because they can. You'll they, listen. This so is that, correct. That, that, so it's, it's very important. I mean, in my genre, in my profession, mm -hmm. Metallica did it in early 2000s with Napster. Yeah. Warned about everything. Now they're, now they're still problems with it, but they're working on it. And this is 23 years later, yeah. and there's still a problem with streaming versus, uh, totally. uh, uh, you know, residuals. And I love what Snoop nature. Dogg's saying about it. You know what I mean? Where he's saying, like, in the 90s, I would sell, you know, a couple million CDs, and I'd see a big percentage of that. Now you're telling me I have billions mm -hmm. of streams, and I'm seeing 
sense, you know, yeah. like, like I, yeah, there's going to be a fixing. So in that, I, mean, I am curious is when you say residuals are part of it too. Yes. Uh, because again, I think that, that with these new technologies coming out every time it happens, yeah. these contracts and things between artists and the companies that are basically the banks for everything, yeah. they need to be reworked every time. Yeah, and, ke- and held in check, right? right? Like held in check. I think that's what it is because, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, listen, I have educated myself since May because the writer's strike started in May and I'm a guild member and I've been on the picket lines. Um, but I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm like a dummy. <laughs> like, I didn't know any, like, I barely I understand. Social clip out right there. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> that, I barely understand how to pay my cable bill, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I have spent this time educating myself a little bit more and it's like, if you are the business and you have shareholders, your job is to spend as little as possible and make as much as profit. Right. I think everybody basically understands that. The problem is, is that the push for that profit is edging out a livelihood. And to me, really like residuals and AI and healthcare and all the topics are covered under protecting a livelihood. Mm-hmm. Our nation has a minimum wage, right? And even that is not that fucking great, no. to be quite honest. But the entertainment industry, like a new actor is lucky to get two small jobs a year, right? Yeah, that's not and all you want is for them to fucking go to a doctor and get and go to the dentist and get checked out and be healthy. Mm-hmm. Like that is literally what we're, what this strike is about. Okay. Are those people, are kids getting out of high school, getting out of college and like, I wanna be an actor. And a job that used to pay you anywhere from two, three, sometimes $5,000 for a guest star is now paying less than $1,000 on these streamers. And the streamers are pleading like, we don't know how to make money. It's like, Netflix knows so much more in terms of like analytics than NBC did when Friends was on. Mm. They did the Nielsen's and they would do sample testing. They'd be like, we think about 20 million people and are watching. Was, yeah, you're right. Those are all more of a guesstimation, whereas yes. now you have hard line evidence and numbers that they, they can They know bring when in. you pause to go to the bathroom. Yeah. They know, like. Which, by the way, stop asking me. <laughs> all right? Like, I'm Lying still watching, mouth. okay? <laughs> you're just good at hydration. <laughs> Lay off, Netflix. <laughs> and by the way, why'd they stop skipping all the, the, the. So I noticed that all the streaming people stopped allowing you to. Uh, it doesn't automatically skip the intros anymore. Like when it right. first came out, like yeah. I remember I would watch Friends on Netflix before it went mm-hmm. to HBO Max, <laughs> and I would be able to listen to it on repeat while I'm falling asleep, and it would just go through. But now yes. I have to hear the fucking song over and over again. Sure, sure. So I was just, I'm sure that has something to do with the copyright on the music and, and the intro or That's something a, like I that. I mean, they have, they just do have so much information. And, and, and any frustration or genuine anger I have at the greed, because it's greed, but that is their job. Their job is to right. make more money and spend less. I get it. But the fiscal mismanagement, especially at the streaming level, Netflix knows subscribe, they have subscribers. They know mm-hmm. how much they're getting monthly. So they should know how much to spend on employees, spend on production, to, but they're built on borrowed money. That's the dirty secret, is that Netflix was a company that went public and went into the streaming by borrowing money from banks. So they are constantly paying off debts. So when hmm. they say, we're not making any money, it's because they've mismanaged what company, their finances. But what company hasn't started that way? 100%, you know? but the profits of, if you pool together the five salaries of Netflix, Prime, Apple, Hulu, and Max, the, the, the bosses, their yeah. salaries, one guy's salary, and all guys, one, just their salary, and you took 2% <laughs> wait, from wait, the total. I have to laugh for a second, all guys, I, I got that. I went a little, yeah, I went yeah, all I anti-patriarchy, like yeah, yeah, you know I like what I mean? I I like Protect it. our sisters. Um, 2% of those five dudes would cover everything the Writers Guild is asking for. That's just the Writers Guild. That's, yeah. that's, that's the imbalance in that they're like, we don't wanna have to suffer to protect the minimum right. because we are so irresponsible at the expenditures at the top. I also yeah. heard, so I have kids, a day, we watch, thank you. Uh, we watch Live and Maddie, it's a Disney show. Yeah, sure. And uh, the brother- They hired one actress to do two parts. <laughs> right. <laughs> These See? greedy pigs, <laughs> you know? Good point. God. But uh, the brother in it was talking on a podcast, I saw a clip of it, and he was talking about how, uh, and you could probably speak to this better, that after, th- on the fourth season, 
they have to start paying more. Right. So what they would do is yeah, it'd yeah, be yeah. Liv and Maddie, but then right. on the fourth season, rather than it being Liv and Maddie again, it'd be Liv and Maddie go to Paris. Yes. Yeah. And so it's technically a new show. They do right? that, so with, they they do that with everything now, man. Yes. Everything that's even halfway successful, they have to completely rework their yeah. contract. You would know better than, than, than us on that. It comes they, down to renegotiation. Yeah, gemstones just had, the, had finished yeah. season three. I'm like, what's gonna happen now? Yeah. I still want this show to keep they're going. Good. They're coming back. Okay, I know good. for a fact that they're coming back. Good. But like, like, again, not to make Netflix the face of it, but they are sort of the juggernaut of that streaming front. They started everything. They started it all. Um, you know, they don't go past two seasons for the same reason, unless mm. it's unless it's a Stranger Things, unless, unless it's a cultural touchstone, right? Like, that's the power of Stranger Things, is they know how many people are watching it, and they won't ever say, but they also know that it is a, it is event television, and that's hard right. to accomplish more and more, I feel. Like, mm -hmm. gathering everybody as opposed to in the 50s, 60s when there was four channels. Oh, dude. Like everybody watched Ed Sullivan. You know, yeah. 40 million people are all watching the same thing. Right. That's hard to do now, which I think is a beautiful thing because everybody gets their own flavor and everybody Absolutely. has their own lane. Yeah. But, the, you know, it, it, it's tricky. It's just about protecting that bottom line. And the fact that there is so much pushback and so much holdout from the MPTP side is really sad because it's a little transparent. There's so much information out there. You can figure, you can, you oh, wait, can. Wait, wait, what was that? Uh, a, a AMPTP is the American uh, Motion Picture and Television Producers Association. Okay, gotcha. So that's like the board of negotiators for the bad guys, quote unquote. Okay. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just that. Because like, listen, these streamers also have other avenues of revenue. Netflix, all that information they have, they're selling to Big Pharma and to, oh, yeah. you know, to um, Colgate and to Toyota. And they're, te they're saying, well, we know that this household, because when you sign up your Netflix thing, you go, here's my name and here's my age and here, you know, so they can calibrate like, oh, you want to sell more toothpaste to 40 year old guys who love Ninja Turtles? Yeah. Here's what they're watching and here's when they go to the bathroom. Right. <laughs> Back to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> No, that, I mean, and I know that that's like, when you talk, when you get into that, that like scares a lot of people too, right? Of like, oh, they know everything about me, right? Yeah. And it's like, I don't know if you realize this, but they've known everything about you from before this. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. More than we so realize. Like, like, yeah, yeah right. totally. And, yeah. I, and I, so I, I don't, I don't get too scared about that because I'm like, really, I'm like, Believe it or not, people, my life's pretty fucking normal and boring outside of some, <laughs> outside of some cool shit that I get to do. Well, but like, I've I seen your Halloween phone. decorations, so I don't know how boring. I, I don't know say how boring. boring. I'm saying boring in the sense of like, if someone's listening to my conversations or like, we're, I'm, yeah. I'm like, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna have to listen to a lot of nonsense for a long time to get like right. one iota of, of unless you go in your and Oculus and then uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently well, yeah, that, check that, 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 don't, do not go to the search history. <laughs> I'm always playing PGA at golf, Taryn. I don't know what you're talking about. Huh. Man, the handle was crazy sticky. <laughs> I grip real hard. Okay. Okay. I think that that's true. I think you're telling the truth. <laughs> but I mean, for you, for you, I'm curious, because like touring has always been the biggest income, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And I think that that's- Not always, but it is now. Yeah. Not always. Not always. Like we were, like we were saying, you brought up like Snoop Dogg and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, there was, there's a cutoff that happened like late 80s, late 80s, late 90s, early 2000s when we, you know, talked about Lars and Metallica yeah. standing up to Napster that way. Mm -hmm. um, where at that point, records were still making artists a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd, you know, Metallica, as since we're just on the subject, you know, go diamond on the Black Album. Yeah. They got a lot of money on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They, they had a fair... Uh, as favorable as a deal as you could have mm -hmm. at the time, you know? And then you have like on the punk rock level, you have, you know, when albums would sell for Offspring or Rancid in the mid 90s when they were on an uh, independent label like Epitaph, but they get, you know, uh, a diamond 10 million sold worldwide record. Mm. All of a sudden Dexter's flying his own private jet to his next show, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. it's like there was some serious money on that stuff. Um, and that, that goes back, I mean, our manager, when we first broke and got our first platinum record for City of Evil, we would do the math and see like what, what that would have been. So, so that went platinum in like 2006, I wanna say. Mm. If it had happened in 96, we'd be looking at a diamond record. Jeez, yeah. And that was back in 2006. Now yeah. it's like, well, you'd be lucky to sell 60,000 copies. Right. You know, like right. it's, 
in the first week, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty funny. And is that but digital? Okay. Is that vinyl? Is that like, how is that broken down? So now? that's the other thing. That's always a big question. I don't have the answer. Every time I talk to someone, they, you know, like in management or business side of stuff, cause I'm, I'm very ignorant to that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I know what I hear and I ask questions and stuff, but I'm not on the in, ins and outs. And it all seems pretty vague to me, to be honest. If I, like, there's always like, you know, this amount of streams counts for this amount of downloads, and this amount mm -hmm. of downloads counts for this amount of hard copies. Mm -hmm. Hard copies now actually count for more than they used to because they don't sell them anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's like- <laughs> They it's have just, to go out of their way to find them kind of thing. Exactly. So you know the value of that fan. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah So, and, and they're trying to help mom and pop shops still. So when you release yeah. a record, you send them off to a bunch of mom and pop shops. Mm -hmm. Those albums, I believe, count for a couple more per. Mm -hmm. Oh, so okay. it's like, it, they are trying certain things, but mm. at the end of the day, Spotify, Apple, all these places, similar to Netflix, Hulu, uh, Max, all those ones that you mentioned, they have all the information, but somehow the artists aren't getting all of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a miscommunication between about five different people before it gets to be, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and why? Exactly. And why? Well, that, and then we could get into, I don't know how familiar you are with the blockchain and Web3 and everything. Sure, like that. I mean. That's, I, going to, that's going to help us. Rick Glassman begging me to buy Bitcoin. Why does he have to beg you? Why have he? <laughs> <laughs> Not big, but I feel like the first conversation, and Rick is sort of like a connector to Sam and I, um, the first time I met Rick, he was like, do you have Bitcoin? You gotta have Bitcoin. <laughs> I was like, oh, did I sign up for some of this? If you signed up for some of that five years ago, you are a millionaire. And I was like, okay, well, I definitely did not then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you think that that will, in terms of the financial structure of everything? Well, it's just, if you put things on the blockchain or the polychain, um, everything is gonna be quicker to, mm -hmm. to the artist, the creator, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, whatever they end up calling that when this stuff actually <laughs> happens. Um, and everything is transparent. Yeah. So their numbers as a company, if they if they have the balls to put it on the blockchain, mm -hmm. which hopefully there'll be enough a swell that forces companies to do this. Yeah. If they're paying you on the blockchain, there's no longer that vagueness. Yeah. It's, it's all transparent. That's cool. And it's transparent to the fans who who might purchase something from the artist into that thing. So yeah. they know where it's coming. Everyone knows where everyone's money is coming from at yeah. that point. That's cool. If we could all put it on a polychain. That's cool. Yeah. I do think live performance. Yeah will the value of that will increase as this tech becomes not to say that tech isn't so advanced that they won't figure out an AI band, but I just oh, think yeah. that they, I think the gathering and a human experience for the m person with money in their hand, the experience of gathering, that will, that has unbreakable value, I feel. I, I, I absolutely 100% agree with that because we kind of saw it in a small stage when everything went away for a little while. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then it all came back and everyone was Hungry thirsty for as fuck Correct. for it. Yes. You know? So yes. it's like... Well, ticket prices haven't dropped. It used no. to be COVID uh, add-ons to tickets. Well, that's, that's going to be day. everything. Nothing's dropping back from no. that. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Back to greed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they found ways to cut corners and put more money in their pockets. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, yeah, uh, but at me. least whiskey's good. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, they can't take that away from us. <laughs> <laughs> I drink your time. Mm. You take my profit, I drink your time. Yeah, so... So we covered a little bit of that. Like we don't need. I mean, I'd love to. Go I know. I love how deep we went into it. I think. I think. It, I learned a lot. Cool. Same, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Right back at uh, you. On that though, like so, one of the other shows I mentioned that I, me and the wife were a big fan of is Single Parents. Thanks, man. And uh, you're on that show, and it got two seasons. Mm -hmm. But then I can't. Speaking on the streaming thing, it's not on Peacock. It was on NBC, right? I think it, it was. So it was a an ABC show. ABC. I show, think okay. it lived on Hulu, and but because. Uh, it was a 20, I mean, it's so convoluted, but 20th Century Studios, which Disney purchased while we were produ making that show. So we switched parent companies. So technically, the Disney Corporation owns it now. Okay. So I know if I go to Canada or if I go out of the country, it's on Disney Plus, which is very oh, cool. Oh, that's very that cool. that feels like the right platform for it. Because it was a really sweet show, and it was, it was so nice, and we love making it, and I love the people that I did it with, and then um, who's the guy, who's COVID the guy hit? from uh, Ray, Ray Romano that was on the Brad show? Garrett. Brad Garrett, oh, that's right. So great. Yeah, yeah his character on that was was something, yeah. something to behold. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was a good. It was a good uh, uh, variation of of people, and I, I just really love the concept of it because I do think being a single parent is like 
one of the most admirable and probably difficult things to be, you know what I, I mean? I could only imagine, you know, when my wife gets drunk and leaves me with the kid, it's like... <laughs> you get a little taste. Yeah, yeah, you get a little <laughs> it's taste. It's like the it. opposite. But <laughs> <laughs> I like that you threw under the bus, though. But Absolutely, uh, it's our anniversary. But also, so why are all the CEOs male? <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to balance. Just trying to, your, your, your audience is probably... Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, <it's> talented. <laughs> But yeah, um, so it was a good show. But that, no, that was really sweet. And then, and then, yeah, COVID hit, and so like we'll say what, we blame that, <laughs> you know? We like who knows? Mm. But um, yeah, we literally wrapped the week before March twenty, what March thirteenth or whatever the date is. Okay. Um, and then yeah, we all kind of sat around for a while. But um, that was just one of the, like the most pleasant experiences, and it's really great. It's something that I was able to watch with my kids. Yeah. Um, so I was really. Really proud of it. No, it was a great show. Thanks, I, I really, I really liked your character. I just like the, the nice guy, just helping everybody out. Yeah, like, yeah, it, was, yeah. it made it was a feel good. It was yeah, a feel good exactly. sitcom. Feel good sitcom. That's what right? you're going for. Yeah. And then you get to uh, back to Netflix. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, the remake of uh, River Wild. Yeah, you're with man. Your co-star, you're with your co-star again. Yeah. So late and Adam Brody, who was yeah. on Gasks of a Girl with her. So now you guys have yes. this whole triangle going. Totally. So he's the OC. She's Gossip Girl. Oh, I'm sorry. So there. No, no, no. I'm with you. I had to educate my, myself my, as well. My, my wife watched all of it. Like, <laughs> yeah. like we were in college when all that was running. So, so like, I was I, like, that's the new. Cro- that's the new Dawson's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's how I take. That's the new Buffy. That's the new Dawson's. Right. Right. Um, yeah. But then um, and and and. They reached out, like Adam and Layton had put this together, and Ben, uh, who was the director and the writer, had worked with Adam, and um, that was cool, because we were out, we shot that last summer in Bosnia, Slovakia, and Hungary. Whoa. Yeah. Guess when all and the- you know what? This is cool. I saw Pearl Jam in Budapest. That is sick. It was sick. What, did they, what, what kind of venue is out there? It was good. It was a good size. I would say at least like twenty to thirty thousand strong. Like Whoa. it was big and Hungarian and and English. There's not a lot of crossover. Right. And like Budapest, like in the city, you know, every fifth person maybe speaks a little bit of English, but okay. it's all a lot of Hungarian. I'll tell you what, those twenty thousand, if I'm lowballing it, knew every word to every song. And that's they so hadn't cool. played in Budapest since 94. Oh, that's a, that's a home, co- oh, that's so cool. It was very that's cool. Rad. It was rad. a great show. I've never been to Bud- Budapest. Uh, I'm only pronouncing dope. that way now that I know the way take to pronounce it. Take it, take it, because it, it'll be like, yeah. oh, you've been. Because I was, a, I, 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 the, my, my whole thing was, uh, knowledge of it is the Grand Budapest Hotel. Sure. Movie, which is a fantastic fucking movie. Good movie, good movie. Um, you love Wes Anderson? Wes Anderson's great. He's pretty rad. Yeah. Asteroid City, did you like it? I didn't see it yet. Okay. Is it good? good? It's fun. Yeah. He's, he's, he's an there, artist. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has his style, and it... God, it's so good. Yep. So good. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so we, we shot the movie, yeah, to, to double for Montana, of all places. And um, That's what I was... Good. When I was watching it, I was <laughs> like... And you just said that. I was like, why would you go all the way there? Like, yeah. Montana's there. Mammoth is right here. Like, yeah. it looks... Well, I thought you might have done it there. An almighty <laughs> so dollar, before, before you get that role, do you yeah. know that that's where the shooting's going to be? Or do you... Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. They all... all that they, they let you know, like, location and, and, and whatnot. And at one point, my family was going to go with me. But then my wife, she booked a gig. And so she had to stay here. And then the kids did a camp and basically I was away from the fam for seven weeks. How old are your uh, kids? I have an eight-year-old and a 14-year-old. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you're on 14. It's got to be a little bit on the other side. I got a six-year-old. Yeah. I, got, I okay. got the one. That's the oldest is six. I only have one. Oh, you have one. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yours are boy or girl? Uh, two girls. Two girls. Yeah. So you're a, you're a daughter dad. I am a girl dad. Yeah. yeah. Is that what they call it? Girl dad, daughter dad? I don't yeah. Know. Girl dad, I think, is what is the phrase I've heard. Okay. Matt Stafford, girl dad. There you go. Los That's Angeles what it is. Rams. We'll get to that. I saw the Raiders <laughs> plaque. I saw the Raiders plaque in the corner. <laughs> no, there's no there's no hatred for the Rams. Like there's uh, for me, like because it just mm. that's a that's a rivalry. Like when when we were growing up, yeah, it was Raiders and uh, the Rams. Yep, here in LA, mm-hmm. and and then Anaheim, yeah, and then Anaheim. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I gravitated towards the Raiders because one, my family were a bunch of Raiders fans. Yeah. Two, it was that cool hip hop culture to be part for sure. of the Raiders. Yes. And then they had you know the. 
uh, Gridiron Classics where they'd tell the story of when they used to win championships. Right. And <laughs> they had a great team. I mean, like, yeah. if either, like, they had the Bill Jackson, Marcus the... Allen, Ronnie Lott, Howie oh. Long, like, they had, and Madden, you know, his connection to Oakland. But listen, as a Raiders and Rams fan, at least we both hate the Niners. <sighs> so, I do. <laughs> I do. Yes. However, I have to admit there was, like, Four years in there when I was like in elementary school, about to go into mm. into uh, middle school. Yeah, when it was Steve Young, yeah, Jerry Rice, Deion Sanders sometimes because the other sure. times he played for the Cowboys. Right, right. And I was like, that's too good of a fucking team. I like that yeah. team. Our <laughs> neighbors growing up were the Mazers, and they uh, were every Sunday red and gold Forty uh, ers They're all about it, and I do credit them a lot with like my. Um, desire to belong to a team. Mm. I was always so like envious and covetous of like how connected they were. They were Niners, every, you know. And by the time I really caught on to football and the knowledge of it and like playing fantasy, I was in like late high school, early college, okay. and LA didn't have a team. Yeah. And so I promised myself, I said, whatever team, I know we'll get a team again. Whatever team comes back, I'm all in mm -hmm. because I love being from LA and yeah. I love football. That's a, I mean, that's solid reasons. And yeah. damn, SoFi is such a good it's fucking stadium. It's a good stadium. To get in on the ground floor. Hey, we we can like, both agree, though, bro. like the step-headed step children and the Chargers. Like, we could... We could the uh, Carson Chargers. Oh, God. What Tigerons. Are, <laughs> I just don't even know why they did it. I was like, yeah. you just stay in San Diego, man. You're just... You're going to come over. You're going to be the Clippers. And then, yeah. like, you know... I think like, they do... I, I honestly do think, like, they need the income to pay for that stadium, that incredible stadium. Right. And I do like Herbert. You know, Herbert's know. great. He's great. There's, it's nothing against the players. Ever. No, but for me, it's San never Diego. against the players. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Totally. And I'm a Raiders fan. They're in our division. So right. And my best friend from like fifth grade yeah. is a huge Chargers fan. And yeah. He starts chirping at me. Ugh. And I'm just like, man, just win. Just go to a Super Bowl and then talk to me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> earn, earn your bragging rights. Yeah, exactly. Like, come on. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, you yeah. sound like a Clippers fan. <laughs> I, honestly, I don't know. You a basketball fan too? I'm not. My bro is huge yeah, so Lakers fan. You know what fan. I'm talking about. He's a Lakers dude. Absolutely. Through through. It's a, so yeah, it's that's like, the only know. basketball team in, in in California. Let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Golden State's pretty fun good too, but yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, yeah. I guess they're pretty good. We'll give it to them. But All right. Know. We so, like stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back to uh, River Wild though. Okay. Yes. Um, wanted to ask. So. It's a remake, right? Is it technically a remake or is it's it a reimagining? Like reimagining. Yes, okay. I think. Because the original was Meryl Streep and, yeah. and, and uh, Kevin Bacon, which I loved as a kid. I loved that Same. movie. And I like the spin, though, of this reimagine, uh, reimagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's definitely like darker. I feel like that one is like um, a family thriller, which is mm. a genre they don't really do so much anymore. Family thriller That's is exactly really what it is. Yeah. yeah. Like, I wish they would do that more because as a, as a parent and you watch either shit or yes. things are too, <laughs> too far, yeah, you like, want something middle ground. Yeah, yeah. totally. I totally yeah. agree with yeah. that, actually. There was, that was the 90s thing. It totally. was. Totally. Like I didn't Air realize Force, that at the Air time. Force I thought it was, one had a daughter, and it's like I gotta sing my daughter. The whole time I thought I was just mature. Like I was like, yeah, I'm watching an adult movie. And now yeah. I think back and I'm like, and I still love these movies. And I'm going like, ah, ah they had the kid and the that, dog yeah. and the family yeah. thing. Yeah. And this one, our yeah. River Wild, not the River Wild. <laughs> um, our River Wild, uh, the director Ben, he intentionally was like, I kind of wanted. Like, if we're going to take something that a lot of people love and we're going to use that name recognition, there has to be a good reason to make it now. And so he really kind of wanted to ground it and make it a little darker, make it a little more uh, relevant to today and, mm -hmm. and to male-female dynamics, I think, especially. A lot of the conflict comes out of that. Um, but he really wanted to make it a little grittier and, right. and so to separate, I think, in tone as yeah. well. Yeah. I, and I would say to everyone at home, go watch that. Uh, September's a great time for it because it's just dark enough to get you into October. Yeah. 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 It's not a Halloween movie yet. It's not a Halloween movie. You know, it's definitely See, not, River but it's Wild, close. then Exorcist the Believer, yeah. you know? Which Easier I can't wait Easy way more. into it. Yeah, you know. You I, see that trailer? I saw the trailer. My wife is the bigger... I'm more of the... If you can see my tattoos, I'm more of like the character-based horror movies from the great. 80s and 90s. That's, that's where my... My you really wanted lies. Dark Universe to work. Yeah, I really, I, I root for the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. when it comes to like the exorcism and like the spiritual, well, like not spiritual, but like that side Supernatural of it, where you can be Supernatural, it's right? like, yeah. I, I enjoy those movies, don't get me wrong, but they're not something that I like. You want a boogeyman. Yeah, I, I, want, I want a Freddy Krueger. You want a Freddy Krueger. I want Robert England. That's yep. all I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't we all? <laughs>
So have you had Fred? Uh, uh, I haven't had him on the show. I did okay. meet him once, though. Okay. We were at a, a, the Fangoria Awards in, uh, in cool. L.A., and he was at the bar, and I walked up, and he was already talking to my guitar player. I was like, oh, I got to get on on this. Yeah. So I just stand there, and like, he proceeds to tell some stories. And while he's telling him, he sounds, he doesn't sound like Robert England. He, all of a sudden, he sounds exactly like Freddy Krueger at the wow. bar, having a drink, telling me about like this offset stuff. And I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever had happen to that me in my rules. life. Yeah. That rules. Yeah. But we got to reach out to him, Sam. Yeah. I think we have, and he shut he us down. Laguna Beach, I think. Oh, he sells art. Go to him. Can I, can I circle back to, spoiler alert for you guys who haven't seen the movie, the end of the movie, River Wild. Yes, sir. Spoiler alert again. Warning. I only see one body at the end. Is uh, that sure? There's a sequel coming, man. Sure. Come on. Sure. Is it? Or did I miss it? I rewound no, it. Sure. No, I know. One. I know. It there's only one. Yeah. There's only one. Mm -hmm. I, that was, yeah. I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's that's not necessarily how the script read, but that's oh, interesting really? if they're okay. at all leaving that open I was crazy and I missed you know it. What else it's I my noticed. body, so I'm definitely not coming back to the sequel. <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, that's the spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> By the way, you should come back just to show off that beard again. That was sick. That was a good beard, right? That was did. I was a Hungarian beard. That was a Hungarian <laughs> beard. <right? laughs> Hungarian, Hungarian, but Montana sculpted beard. Yeah. That was. Thank you. That was a. Sick, Thank you, sir. Thick, strong. Both beard. me and my brother grow. We grow solid I see, beards. I'm seeing that. I'm yeah, seeing yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Man, that's good stuff. It's <laughs> good stuff. No, but it, it was a little bit darker though. Like, and yeah. I and I liked that. I oh, mean, thanks. It was. It, I I was really into it, man. It was a it cool, was a dude. Movie. Everyone, cool. check it out. Everyone check it out. It was a fun fun one. We got to train at a Slovakian Olympic Rapids facility. Oh. And okay, that's that's where I was going to go with that. Yeah. I'm so okay. glad you brought that up. Yes. When you guys are training for it. Yes, sir. What is it? I'm, I'm sure you're about to walk us through that a little bit. But then, do you actually get to take it to the river, or is that all stunt doubles? We're definitely in the water for a lot. There's some stunt double stuff. I would say like any wide where you see the boat literally like going down water. There's a couple where, where they let me do it, but um, uh, Tomas, my my double, did did all the bigger like hanging off of things in, in the wide. But we were in the water quite a bit and we were in the water at night, which wasn't as fun as you might think it might be. Um, <laughs> but this this cool training facility was also doubled for a lot of the inserts so that they could because they could they had two paths and they could control the rapids. They could they oh. could close a door and raise the level so that this was like now a category four or like open half the door and now it's a three and we can run that as a two, which is really cool. That's amazing um, that they could do that. It was crazy. Liptovsky Mikulash. If you're ever in the Slovakian area and stop by. Uh, I got your number now. You so next time I'm there, I'd be like, what was Hit that again? Up. Yeah, Liptovsky <laughs> Mikulaj. Hit him up. The USA Cafe was a trip. They had, or like the USA Bar or whatever. It was oh, like, they always have like one of those bars yes. everywhere. Those are so much so fun. so funny. Those are so fun. Like whatever like mutated version of America that they think you're looking for. Yeah, you but at least, at least they pay and get like the good TV on. You know, yeah, you, get, exactly. you get your sports There's that great way. Great screens. The food is sports. always a little funny. The arcade games are 12 years old. Old, you know, uh, which I'm okay with. You're cruising <laughs> USA. You, you, yeah. You saw, yeah, cruising USA. I'm still yeah. over here on and Miss Pac Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was fun. It was cool. They had, there's a guy, there's a Slovakian Olympian who did kayak slalom. So he was in a kayak and he'd go through the slalom gates. And it was, that's, it's his facility. Cause exactly. he's got like nine medals, six of them gold, like three bronze, three silver, something like that. Wow. And one day we went a little late into our training and he showed up and he's screaming at Gary and he's like on the river bank. He's like, and the way that the, the, the slalom flags work is that they have wires across the river and they hang. So he starts throwing the flags in front of our boat. That's <laughs> so really like a bunch of like, LA actors who are like, yeah. do I look like a river guy? You know, <laughs> it's like a red slalom flag almost slices my neck. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. That sounds it was great. great. It was like we've angered an Olympian. Did you have did you have any prior experience on, on White Rap? Not really. We grew up in Big Bear, so yeah. there's outdoorsy hiking, alpine. We knew that well. Um, but no, it was my first whitewater rafting experience. It was very fun. Yeah, I've never done that. I've been down a river, but not white rift. Yeah, white rift. I like a, I like an inner tube and like yeah, an inner tube and yeah, a yeah. couple beers. Yeah, you know, exactly. throw a fishing line. You know, exactly right. Exactly. I can do that. No yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. Put the whole yeah. Why don't, they ever write, why don't they ever write interesting movies so you can play? Where's that River guy? Flow? The movie, the River Flow <laughs> Wild. Tubin, you guys remember Tubing that game wild. back in the day? Yeah, the Tubing, Tubing wild. wild. We gotta make that game. Let's after ride it. I'm in. I'm in. 
I, I, I would love to be a part of a movie of any kind, actually. Yeah. But, oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, when I was a, when I was a kid, I had like, I mean, I'm not gonna say any training, but I had, there was like a performance arts class in middle school, and I was awesome. I was a part of that, you know, for three years, and it was that and music yeah. for me. So I was like, I always, I'm not good at it, but I always liked uh, the idea of being able to act or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh. two roads diverged. And yeah. You know, well, you know, this one was a little bit easier. It's only four strings. So yeah. I don't have to remember <laughs> lines. <laughs> I've seen the ten pound bass. I know it's not that easy. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Because yeah, because you got recruited out of high school to the band. Yes, I did. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's a good summer high school job. Well, it was in the middle of the winter. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, so mid year then. Yeah, it was mid year. I, I, I never finished high school. Wow. Uh, I was my mom. My mom said it was okay as long as I got my GED, and I said, "Sure, mom, I'm gonna get my GED." I never did. I don't see. <laughs> <laughs> it's right next to the Bundy book. <laughs> You bought a GED from David Buster's. <laughs> Congratulations, that would be great. dude! That's the GED to get. Yeah, by the way, by the way. <laughs> yes, hundred percent. How great is David Buster's, by the way? So it was my favorite place to go to when I was on SNL because there's a Dave and Buster's in Times Square. Yes, I know the one. And, yeah, and we started we we started this later in in my run there after like a, after a table read, which you're reading forty sketches for like. Four or five I hours. I couldn't imagine remembering all those lines, dude. That's you read insane. it. You don't, you don't have to like memorize right, right, them. Right. And then and then and even on the, the show, cue cards, the right? cue cards are there. Okay. Always play the cards. Um, but we would go to Dave and Buster's, and we had some real good times there. And when Drake hosted, he rented out the Dave and Buster's for the after party, and it was one of the most hilarious after parties because he'd also flown in a jet of exotic dancers from this. his club in Toronto. See, this is why you want to be on Saturday Night Live, this. <laughs> <laughs> right? But you, I mean, I wish I had like a bird's eye camera of that night because there was like the comedy writer performers like playing trivia <laughs> and enjoying the free drinks. And then the strippers and Drake's like DJ set up <laughs> over like normally where the well, tables are. Are you, are you are trying the not to throw any of the cast members under the bus? Like they weren't over there. Too? There was I honest. There was not a ton of crossover. Really? Yeah. I mean, maybe Pete went in there. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> that's his, that's his <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. That's not fact, but it does make sense. It does. I mean, I, I could picture it. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just like oil and water. It was so funny. That it was is so hilarious. like a bunch of nerds, a bunch of like hilarious joke nerds playing video games for free and just isn't that strippers. funny though? Like uh, the more I, I I meet people from let's call it the blanket of entertainment, right? Mm. Like music, sports, acting, comedy. I feel like they're all entertainment, right? For sure. Yes. Um, each of us in di in these different little pockets of the genre. Wish we were on the other side. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure, absolutely. It's I so, see it more so and more. Odd. My favorite things were always like watching the band perform because like what it is, what, what I admire most out of many things for musicianship is the earned skill you have. Hmm. You can't naturally be good at bass. No. You have to put in your hours. I mean, there's probably a few out you there. Can't, pretty fucking good. But. I mean, I'm sure that there's inclination. I'm sure there's tempo and there's an ear. I, I understand that. But in terms of mastering an object to create harmony, to create melody, like, you, you can be naturally funny, right? Like, you can be, like, a class clown. Yeah, And yeah, sure, yeah. and that's not, like, I'm not, like, diminishing. I've put in a lot of hours and I've done a lot of training um. in what I do. But I think part of the coveting, I know speaking for myself and many comedians, of like a rock star is that confidence of an earned skill. Mm. Fucking rules. Well, I've never thought of it that way. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> this guy. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers. So speaking on uh, SNL real quick, and you did mm -hmm. mention you're your, uh, watching the performances and stuff. So yes. what have been some of those standout ones for you? I mean, you mentioned Drake. That's got to be a standout moment, just period. He but was like, dope. He, he, was, he was a great host just because yeah. he's like got that like any kid actor, you know what I mean? Like I think that's why Timberlake uh, is always so good on the show because like damn, he's Timberlake. a kid actor, damn Timberlake. turned musician. He knows how to perform and like Miley was the same. Drake was great. Um, but the music performances, number one's easy. It was Prince. Ooh. He forewent... The two, you do the two, you do a uh, uh, performance, one song before update, and then mm -hmm. one before the final sketch, right? 
And he said, no, I just want seven minutes somewhere in the middle of the show. <laughs> and he really? took seven minutes and he did a medley of a bunch of his stuff. No, I remember that. And he shredded, he shredded for what felt like two or three minutes on a live show. It was, and it was... Epic. Epic. I, I couldn't, I can only imagine being in the studio for that, but like, like I said, I'm a huge SNL fan. I, I rec- since I was a kid, I would come home from school, uh, in middle school, make myself a tombstone pizza. Delicious. And, uh, and watch the reruns of SNL on Comedy Central. Yeah. It was on at yeah. that time when you came home at two or three o'clock in the afternoon and, you know. Did they have the music then? Because some of them didn't. They did. Right? They, they did. did. Then. There was it a was time then. They did. Was, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember when they got rid of it and I was pretty fucking bummed because yes. I was like, I get to watch, mention Pearl Jam on yeah, there and dude. stuff. And, that was and a good that, one. that was a great one. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's always interesting to me to like, if you're in the studio, what that feels like different, you know, like I, yeah. how, I guess this is a more of a technical question, but if you got artists, some of them like Drake or, or Prince or somebody or, or Miley or anybody actually at this stage, everyone's got in-ear monitors. Mm. So what are you guys hearing as other cast members that just want to check it out? Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. I feel like their sound system, I don't know, is like my official answer. Like, I don't know the setup. But in terms of what you're hearing, they do have speakers for the audience, right? They have like yeah, their they inner have PA this, or whatever, it, it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Interior yeah. PA for the studio. So I think that feedback's happening, but it's a small space. I don't know, right. have you been in the I've never been, I've never been. It's a cool space. I've been but in the building for like other things, but I've, yes. never, I've never been, yeah. Everybody's first impression is like, it's so much smaller than I thought. Mm-hmm. And it is, because it's just like this That's what she said. small, rectangular thing but so like the drum you're hearing fine oh, right always yeah <laughs> the drum you're hearing just fine i tell people who come to the show yeah. like, like our shows like yes. friends and stuff and i'm like they're like can we go to side stage i'm like yeah but you're not gonna want to because yeah. well it, you're only gonna drown hear jokes <laughs> yes right right it and so like because you're there like there's a couple of times where as a cast member i could go to they have a sound check on thursday so like you can go and it's like House lights are on, like there's none of the magic, but they're just working out the sound. And that was always my favorite, was like showing up for rehearsal and hearing whoever was practicing. That's cool. Like McCartney's drummer was fucking sick. Yeah, he's, he's ridiculous. Do you know him? The, the, yeah, like, I, I can't remember, I'm trying to blank Bigger guy. Name. Yeah, yeah like, I'm she, trying to blank on his name. And he's, just his personality as he plays. Isn't it uh, Bonham? It's uh, John Bonham's kind, uh, son, isn't it? Is it right now? Yeah, it was, it was a few years ago. Oh. I couldn't imagine him moving mm. on from him. Mm. I don't think it's him. Though I don't think the one I'm talking about is him. But he was he was awesome. But because he, he just played with so much personality and just felt every moment. Um, but like thinking back, that's such an interesting question because I guess just like yeah, the PA monitor feedback, whatever is what we're hearing. Mm, right. Because you hear would hear all of it. It didn't sound blown out or anything. And but you it wasn't like a big stuff. concert or anything. No, right? no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you couldn't put that much sound in there. No, obviously. correct. Yeah, very, very. Like when Gaga played, and I'm hearing the piano, I'm trying to go like, did I hear the piano? Which I think I did, because as the cast, you can stand just behind camera, so I'm like, 25 right. feet away or whatever. But I think the audience, there's the like they, they, PA yeah, system yeah. is playing it out. For and them. you mentioned it seems small though, but like, I don't think the room itself, I thought was bigger. Like I could, I could piece together what from the years of watching SNL that that room itself where the stand stage is mm-hmm. is a little smaller because they always you know you'd have you mentioned Tom Hanks earlier when he get when he became a five time member and he walks yes. around the whole place you know and and you Steve Martin it. and everybody just walking around the whole place yes super cool to see that kind of yeah. stuff i mean when you first come on the set like your first day uh, at SNL coming in from Mad TV yeah uh, yeah what what was that i mean what do you remember about that first that very first day i mean I, I was really spoiled in that I got a lot of firsts, like a slow burn into it, right? Because the first time I was ever in the space was just to see a show as a guest. And it was Andy and Bill's first show. And it was, I, th- uh, I think, st- yeah, Steve Carell was the host and Kanye was the musical What guest. a slouch of a first day. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. And we sat, what I now know, is right in front of Lauren's office, because he's got an office on the ninth floor, because the audience is on the ninth floor, and the, and the floor itself is eighth. Okay. Um, so the audience is raised. And Kanye, that was uh, power. Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that was cool, because he had all these ballet dancers, like, with him. Was, and was, yeah. He's he was had always, some amazing SNL performances oh, over, he makes, like, over, he, over he, the years. He, 
Um, he knows how to make it look right for TV. He really understands the production of it, mm -hmm. or his designer does, because he alters the stage where you're like, am I in a void now? Where am I? Like, yeah, he takes ownership. Cool. It's, it is impressive. Um, but so that was my first time in the space, which was like exciting. And then you have to audition in the space. You have to audition standing where the host gives the monologue. The monologue yeah. And you have to do five minutes of your own material. That's all they tell you. They say like, we'd love to see three characters. We'd love to see three impressions, but just five minutes of your best stuff. And I had to do that three times. That's gotta be nerve I did it twice one year, like once and then three weeks later, and then a year later did it a third time and that's when I got it. But I remember um, my first time walking on as a cast member, I snuck in kind of like before I was supposed to go up to the offices, I was like, I just gotta be and walk around. And one of our, one of our crew members, his nickname's Trail Mix, was like, big guy, really, you know, very strong guy, but a gentle like a, giant. Like Big Joe. Big, very Big Joe. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's a, that is a great comparison. Very similar to Big Joe. He's like, hey, yeah. I, do, I can show you. <laughs> Can't do it. Um, but he... Thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, hey, can I help you? And I was like, hey, I'm a new cast member. And he took me around to every corner and showed me everything. There's a place where it says, mind your head, because you go down under, mm -hmm. like, the, like, under where the seating is, is where cue cards is, and the paint department, and the sound department, they all have their stations, and there's a mind your head. And Sandler crossed out, uh, or didn't cross out, but he added Farley, specifically, because Chris <laughs> would always hit his head on there. And they left it. And they it. left That's it, so and he had to, like, tape up all this padding on it, because. Farley would come off and go, ah! <laughs> so Sandler wrote Farley on it, which is so cool. And like, just showed you cool like, um, I forget the, the uh, conductor's name, but it was built for a famous conductor for him to do his radio program. That's really? what ADH That's what was built for. for. Really? And so there's behind the steps where the host comes out for the monologue, there's this room behind there, this big long shaft of room where the pipes of the organ still are because they can't get them out. Right. So there's these disconnected pipes that go up like oh. three, like huge. Um, it's just cool stuff like that. You no know one, what I mean? No one decided to turn it into a bong or anything? I mean, there? people went back there all the time and did whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's definitely corners of the studio where people did things that you're not supposed to do in those spaces, uh, yeah. I mean, sure. the show's been around since the 70s. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, but that was my first, like, real-time earning the space was with Trail Mix, walking around, taking in every corner, showing me every detail, every cool story. It was also awesome. I'd, right. lo I'd love to just walk around on that set one, one yeah. day. It's, it's like a bucket list, like, like chance. Like kind yeah, of if you go know, for they, the Tonight Show like or whatever, buy, you could like get buy like, uh, passes anymore you for that? You can do a studio tour for tickets for the show. It's either like knowing someone or you got to do the standby line. And like mm -hmm. we would go out and we would like deliver pizzas or donuts so or whatever. you still got any as being an old cast member? Yeah. So I know someone. He, you know, you got an in. <laughs> you know Fred too. I Fred's Fred got too. more. Yeah, 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 Fred's yeah. got. Fred's yeah. the guy. Yeah. <laughs> Fred was awesome. By I'll get the way. you two tickets off the side. I love that episode you did with him. Oh, he's, thank you I so mean, much. Yeah, he's yeah, well, he's, one of my he was, he was so good on it, man. It was. Yeah. I mean, we were we were just rewatching while we're uh, while we're here uh, waiting for you guys uh, some of the Californian stuff too, because like that was like yeah so cool. Yeah. And then having him tell the story where he got the voice and everything, I was like yeah. I, I didn't know the Dana Carvey part when he said yeah. that to you, like Dana yeah. Carvey's sons. I didn't know that part. Because he and Bill would do it during the table read. They'd do it like if we came back from a hiatus week. He's like, Bill, how was your hiatus? You know, and Bill would be like, <laughs> it was great. I was in LA and I took Koanga <laughs> over to Burbank. And, and like they, I sort of, you get to see the sort of like genesis of it, you know. So you have a, so this is actually funny that you mentioned the, the Fred episode because I asked Fred about it because he wasn't originally from LA, obviously. So. Yeah. But you're closer to the area here. Like yes. when you first like see these, sure. these getting put together, what are right. you, what are you, what's going through your head? They, I mean, because they put me in, in a few of them as a different character and then I ended up playing one character a few times. Mm -hmm. But like, I remember Fred, who's the nicest man in the world like didn't love exactly what I thought a California accent was he'd be like N I'd be like yeah dude all right yeah whoa California you know he'd yeah. be like yeah it, that that's not exact like I'm sort of going for like more like a like a kind of like <laughs> yeah, I just have to say this no. is so fun to hear you do other people's voices. Oh, it's fantastic <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of that slurry drawn out back and then I was like oh so it's more like valley like he's like yeah, I mean, that's close, that's, that, that's not exactly, <laughs> so you didn't even get to correct my calendar. I'm like, dude, I'm actually from, I'm from there. <laughs> but you know, that's his musicality too. Like, right, 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 That's the genius of yeah, him. Yeah. Like, he's 
literally one of my favorite people ever. He was so. Uh, I, I got so a cool. Nice. I got a cool SNL music story. All right, let's go. Maybe, certainly top three moments of my whole time there, in contention for number one. It's Fred's last table read, right? He's been oh, okay. there eleven seasons, something right. like that. Okay. Um, and he would. This is a tradition that was happening from before I got there. At the l season finale of every uh, table read, the last sketch was written by Fred, but it would say written by somebody else, and it would be like, it'd be a roast, a parody sketch where like. It's like, this was written by Bobby Moynihan. It's like, Bobby enters and he's loud and spills food or whatever. And you're like, what is happening? And then it's like, and now Don Roy King, the director of the show stands up. And so Fred would cast crew members and stuff to stand oh, up and be like, so I've fun. taken your shit all season. I don't want it to like, it was like a blooper sketch just for the cast and crew that would net, was not supposed to be in the show, but just would bring the house down, right? Oh, so much fun. So Fred's last episode, so he writes one, and it's all, there's all those moments, and he's hitting all the beats, right? But Fred somehow, and I'm, I, I apologize for kind of stealing his story, because it's his to tell, but apparently he had heard or found out that the Flaming Lips were playing Fallon that day, mm. and knew Wayne, or knew someone, and asked them to do him a favor. And so Fred reads the last line, he's like, yeah, that's just SNL, or whatever. And then he puts down the script and he goes, okay, so now something's gonna happen. It's not sad. This isn't a sad thing. It's a very fun, happy thing, okay? But somebody's gonna come in, they're gonna sing a song. It's gonna be a nice thing. It's not sad. And the fucking flaming lips come in and a cappella sing, do you realize, uh. to us. And we sobbed. Uh. <laughs> Everybody sobbed. Everybody sobbed. It was exceptional. It was such a That's beautiful, perfect That's such a cool way to go yeah. out, too. Yeah. I mean. It's like, that reminds me, like, as a, so we're not privy to that, but like, like when S Steve Carell, who was on the first thing, is leaving the office and you could visually see yes, those, emotion. That, that emotion and yeah. stuff. It's always, it's always something as like a fan, I just watch stuff when the, someone's leaving or the end of a, of a cast and you can see like, they're still playing the character in, the, in those moments, yeah. but you could see a little bit more in, into what they gravitate towards as, a human being, yes. you know what I mean? Yeah, the real emotion underneath of the right. accomplishment, of the rites of passage, the milestone, the saying goodbye, the graduation, you know, all that stuff, yeah. But that was, that was sick. That sounds so rad, that's yeah. amazing. Cool. It was cool. So I have another fun question to ask though. Okay. Out of everyone you kissed on SNL, <laughs> <laughs> who was the best kisser? God, who and was the you better best say Ben kisser. Affleck. <laughs> Ben was a strong kisser. <laughs> that's a strong kisser. That's a strong, firm, so, you know, supple, like not rough, but strong. My favorite, my favorite kiss, which is the first one that came to mind, is Vanessa Bayer, who is my sister. Like, she's like my sister, right? Okay. And we were filming, Daniel Radcliffe was the host, and we were filming a digital short, and it was... 3.30 in the morning, and the premise of the digital short is it's spin the bottle. And it's like a bunch of kids playing spin the bottle at night, and who are you mm -hmm. gonna get? And every time, every time Daniel spins the bottle, it lands on a hobo. <laughs> it just happens to be there. That's the, whole, that's the whole bit. And it's hilarious, and it's weird, and it's fun. But, you know, like every, like Paul and Abby share a kiss, and now the cast, right, we're all laughing, because we're like, this is such a weird thing. And Vanessa being like, my nearest and dearest, <laughs> The buildup to that felt charged, right? So there's a scene where it's she spins, supposed to land on me, and <laughs> we go. And the first time we do it, we go to do the shot, and right before she goes, kiss me, she goes, kisses <laughs> 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 me, but like dry heaves, like into my face, and then we kind of do it, but it's fully an unusable take. <laughs> like, oh, I am like so disgusting. By the way, way. <laughs> I mean, totally, they didn't shame on them, but. Like, am I so repellent? That's hilarious. Yeah, so, that, that's, that's the confidence so booster you needed that day. Oh, God, exactly. <laughs> 3 30 in the morning, yeah. that's a confidence booster. Away boost from my wife. <laughs> uh, not even my closest friend can fake kissing me. Yeah. Well, speaking of your wife, I also have yeah. questions there. I Great. mean, obviously, uh, everyone knows her from uh, How I Met Your Mother and yes. The Avengers. Yeah. How do you know her? Kobe Smolders, kill him. And I met um, through a friend, through, she's Canadian. She's, in real life, she's Canadian. It wasn't just a pure it, character? No, they, they, yeah, it was, it was uh, art imitating life. And I had shot a pilot with a very close friend of hers who was an actor, and we were the leads in that. 
And um, she came to our taping, and apparently we met there, and I don't really remember the specifics. Was this after you were 30? No, 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 we had to because your, your honeymoon She's was the one that the end. drove me to drink, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Marriage. Drove me to educate myself on marriage is what brings us yes. the whiskey today. Oh. Um, and, and then a month later, Paul's like, hey, I'm about to head back to Vancouver, but there's this birthday party. Why don't you come hang out because it's the last time we can hang out. And that's where we met and hit it off. And we're kind of flirty. We went to Cat in the Fiddle. On What's Sunset, that? do you remember that? Do you ever go to that bar, Cat in the Fiddle? It's an old yeah, Hollywood bar. Yeah. Um, and like, we're kind of flirting and people were like, how do you know Paul? And I was like, we did a pilot. And she was like, he was really good in it. And I was like, okay, I can tell she's putting out a vibe. And then she's like, yeah, I, I just booked this pilot and I shoot next week and it's called How I Met Your Mother. And I was like, oh, well, good luck with that, darling. <laughs> and nine years later, <laughs> she bought us a house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's, it's it's good to be the the trophy husband in that. Exactly. I've got the hat that says exactly that. Trophy nice. husband. Yeah, I got a good trophy <laughs> husband hat. Yeah. No, I'm proud. I'm proud to be and an arm. How candy. long have you guys been uh, married now? We have been married eleven years. Eleven years. We just celebrated a week ago. Eleven years. I'm celebrating eleven tomorrow. I mean, where'd you do it? Uh, if you don't mind By the way, I'm doing a drinking drink. game for everybody. Every time they cheers or fist bump, you have to you take have to a drink. shot. <laughs> yeah, fist bump shots. People are gonna get fucked. <laughs> 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 um, cool, that's awesome. Yeah, we were the eighth, and we were in uh, in San Inez, like uh, Solvang. Oh, oh Solvang, yeah, 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 yeah. I just went there uh, on the way up to another wedding, uh, my yeah, sister-in-law's. Cool. So like that, or so we, we we stopped by on the way up up to uh, where they get married. Um, where's the aquarium up there? Monterey. Monterey. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Post ranch. Yeah. Uh, no, it was, they, they, they picked like a little park. There. Oh, yeah, beautiful. You know, it was like right, right off the uh, cliffs there. That whole Southern Bay area. It's gorgeous. Carmel, man. Monterey, beautiful. Dude, I love going up there. Me too. I, swear, I mean, Big Sur, yeah. I haven't done Big Sur yet. My oh, wife, really? My wife's still mad at me for that. But if, you, if you're like, yeah, if you want to like wow her post ranch in in Big Sur. That's the one, well. The treehouse. We, we, rea- we realized that one no after kidding. we had, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're like, so who we get? So luckily, my sister-in-law lives up near the area in, in San Jose. So we're like, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drop Frankie off at you, with Brilliant. you. Yes, yes. <laughs> we're gonna go back and hit to it up. No, because it's awesome. It's yeah, beautiful. No, that, that, I think I'll save that for the 20th anniversary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you make it, babe. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Brand record sales need to come back too because those no, are right. cheap. <laughs> or, or you know, like we'll, it'll get figured out. By time. <laughs> no, 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 I hope the strike ends. Yeah, exactly. We'll meet you there if the strike ends. Yeah, so. sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> oh man, but yeah. So the last thing I'll ask about SNL, and then we can, then we can sure. move on. Was uh, now I forgot what. I, oh, my favorite character of yours, the okay. recurring one on uh, Weekend Update, Jebediah uh, Atkinson. Atkinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that yours? No. Okay. No, no. And and I remember Fred taking saying that Seth wrote. What was the character you asked him? And Seth was the one who wrote oh, it. That uh, was Ian. He said Ian Rubbish. That's Ian right. Rubbish. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah similar. Seth, Seth, and and the Weekend Update crew. That one was like it had been a really long week where like I was in two digital shorts and I was like sleeping in. Because I'd shot till five or six a.m. on Saturday, um, and I woke up to a text from Seth, and he's like, "Hey, we got this idea for a character we think you'd be good at." And they'd read the article about this, <laughs> this like I forget what paper it was, but it wasn't Philadelphia, but it was something like you know North Dakota or whatever, who had been at the Gettysburg Address and gave it a negative review. Like, what is this schlock? This is lame. <laughs> <laughs> the most historic president. So wait, that, was a, that was a real review. That was a real. The first one. That was yes. a real. That made me so. <laughs> isn't that amazing? <laughs> crazy and so I didn't read that character I didn't have to do it at the table read I just went up to the writers room on the ninth floor and did a read through just with the update crew and it was working they're like yeah let's try to dress and yeah it, it just it landed it, it landed hit. awesome yeah. I love every time the crowd would react you just like was, so was that like improv when they, when they would go like, ooh, or did yes. it start, it had to at least start that way and then you kind of fed off of it, right? Correct, okay. correct, yeah. The, I mean, the first one is like, there, there's just, it just a dud and that's the one where Seth breaks in a way I haven't seen him break, where just the joke does not land. <laughs> And how and much fun is that, by the way, for you guys? <laughs> at that point, that was fun. I mean, I trusted Seth a lot, and he yeah. looked out for me. So that that there's uh, it was a really good time. 
Um, but then, yeah, that definitely became part of the character is the mm -hmm. audience response to, and they even built it in structurally into the script of like, we have to have a groaner so yeah. that the audience can react so that we can call back and like, I have one more, but you're not gonna like it if you didn't like the <laughs> Charlie Brown joke or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good. Oh, yeah. Michael Keaton, your impression on the uh, Charlie oh, yeah, Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Keaton, I, Keaton has been a big part of uh, my life since he played Batman. So. Same, same. Beetlejuice for me. Like Beetlejuice, I was Beetlejuice for Halloween. You were a clown, I was Beetlejuice. And then Batman came out and I was Batman. Keaton was the guy and he hosted. Mm. And that was the best because mm -hmm. Bobby and I wrote a sketch that became the monologue. And then maybe a month ago, I ran it. I, we were celebrating my wife's birthday at the steakhouse by where we live, and Keaton walks in with his family, and he's there with his son, and I know this because his son came when he was hosting, and like, there's a lot of that I thing where like, you know somebody, but do they know you? You know that game? Yeah, you always wonder like, 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 hey, do, should do I say you remember hi? me? Yeah, dear, exactly. Yeah, it was yeah, that, yeah. like, and it got me so in my head because same thing, Keaton as Batman is like, that made me go, I want to be in show, I want to be in entertainment. That was, that, that was Batman it. coming down, American Express card. Don't lead home without it. Oh, Will you God. shut up? <laughs> there is no bat. And him gliding down was like, magic is real. Yes. Magic superheroes are real. And I want to do whatever I need to do to get to make things that aren't real. That's interesting real. because that was the first time, I think, for all of us, at least at this age, that like they did a comic book movie serious. Yes. And, that, and they did it. Amazingly, I mean, you had yes. Jack Nicholson as fucking Joker for crying out loud. Tim Burton. I mean, Tim yeah. Burton. I mean, yeah. And then, I mean, you mentioned Keaton as as Beetlejuice too, which yeah, was man. oh god, so great, so good. I remember uh, here in Huntington Beach was a, a, a movie theater that we went as a family every Christmas for whatever movie. Uh, you saw my tombstone signed by Val Kilmer. I'll be a, uh, I'll be a uh, Huckleberry. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's just my game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So like. This charter center was walking distance, and every Christmas they would have like a big movie, or it had just come out like before that. And I remember there was a line out the fucking door for Batman. We stayed in that line to like watch like the mid midday matinee or whatever. Cool. And it was, and I just remember walking away. I mean, I was probably six years old at the time. I yeah. just remember going like, that was the coolest fucking movie I ever seen in my yes. life. And then later I saw Tombstone in the same place and said that was the coolest movie I ever. That's saw. awesome. That's amazing. But and then like, you saw Batman Forever, and, and both of your worlds came together. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and Jim Carrey was in Perfect. it. Like, oh my god. It was Dude, yeah. so everyone like got like weird at that time about like different Batman shifting. Do you yeah. remember that? And like I, I remember thinking, and then everyone goes back to like Val Kilmer wasn't that good of a Batman. I'm like, what are you talking about? He was a great. Batman. He had the perfect was, mouth for Batman. Beautiful yeah. job. Yeah. 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 Beautiful lips, beautiful job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can all agree. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm. uh, well, do you have any like? So you said like that was a time when you realized you wanted to be in showbiz. Yeah, yeah, so, and then and then and Keaton came in to the steakhouse, and I'm like looking at my wife, happy birthday. But should I say hi? Do you think I should say hi? She's like, take a breath, calm down. <laughs> As we're leaving, if he makes eye contact, go over and say hi, and say you know. So I did that. Like I'm walking out and he looked <laughs> and made a beeline for him. I was like, hey, Michael, hey, man, it's Taryn. We did SNL again. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. how are you, man? And I was like, um, yeah, just uh, I saw you. I want to say hi. You know, said hi to his son. And he's like, uh, what are you doing? What are you? And I was like, my, my wife's birthday. We're celebrating. That's great. That's great. You live in the area? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just a couple blocks away. So he's like, yeah, yeah, us two. Us two. We're in here all the time. I was like, oh, same. We come here all, all the And here's Mr. Keith. Man, that would be amazing. <laughs> I invited him to this podcast. <laughs> that's the end of the story. Yeah, don't worry I about it. I invited him here. <laughs> we'll um, cut that out. Hey, don't worry about it. No, I think it's, okay. prob it's probably just a delivery or something. I should have okay. turned that off. Oh, yeah. good. No worries. But, um, so I'm there, and I'm like, uh, it's so good to see you. It's a, it, um, how are they? Oh, that's what he said. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're here all the time. He's like, you come here a lot? I was like, yeah, it's our favorite place. He's like, great, 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 great. Yeah, us too. Um, so if you see me here in the future, feel free to leave me alone. <laughs> no, he didn't. Did he really? Yes, he did. Ah! No. I mean, totally joking, but right. such a great burn. Awesome. Such a perfect it's... burn where I was like, he knows everything. Yeah. He knows. Hold on a second. Yeah, this yeah is no worries. All good. No worries. I right, turned that off. Oh. Might be a, maybe it's important. Or are you about to be served? Uh, yeah, it, it is. I got to get my jacket before I leave Here's for tomorrow. Jacket. Hey, what's up, man? One second, please. All right. I want to talk to you a little bit about comics. Great. Can we do that? Yes, please. All right. So. First of all, you married someone in the Marvel world, which yes. is awesome. Yes. 
But you also wrote, uh, well, first, the illegitimates, right? Yes. So how did that come about first? Obviously, have you always loved comics? And I, yeah, my, my whole life, like a comic book in the Christmas stocking was always part of the thing. And, and X-Men and me and my bro had a toy box of action figures and we'd dump them out and we'd build armies and we'd play. And X-Men, the animated series was huge. Yeah. Batman, the animated series, like very inspirational stuff. Um, and loved comic books. Spider-Man, Batman were huge. X-Men were huge. And I had this idea, and a friend of mine, Mark Andreco, was a comic book writer, and I said, that is a sick jacket. Thank you. That's sick. Yeah, I just... It's, uh, the, it's, been, the, cheetah, it's the cheetah detail, especially. You know what's funny about that is I, had, I ordered the jacket, and it was too tight. Oh. So in order to let it out, they, they released the Added cheetah? And I was like, they're like, what fabric would you want to add it out? And I was like, cheetah print, let's go. So cool. Thank you. That's rock star shit. Right. That's Sorry that shit. I didn't interrupt the podcast. No, but. For, that, for that jacket, worth it. So enough, back to um, nerd talk, not yeah. cool guy stuff. <laughs> enough cool stuff. Yeah, so I had this idea, and I wanted to spitball it to my comic book writer friend, Mark and Jacob, and I told him, and, and then there was a really cool um, encounter on a New York subway. There was a, a husband and wife and their daughter, who was like around my daughter's age, and like she kept looking at me, and I'd make a silly face or whatever, trying to be nice not creepy guy on the subway. <laughs> and the dad goes, hey, are you Taryn Killam from SNL? I was like, yeah, man, nice to meet you. He's like, I'm Mike Martz. And I was oh. like, <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's like, you're the editor of Batman comics for DC. Oh. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, holy effing shit. So through Mike, I was able to connect us to an artist, to Kevin Sharp, who was like our initial riot, uh, artist for like character design and stuff. And yeah, it, and then I self-financed it just because I was like, I believed in this idea and loved it, and we did a, a six-issue arc and put that out in stores, and that was like a so dream So is that how it works with ID, uh, IDW? So we, I produced it, and they, they offered to distribute it. They're like, we'll put it out, we'll help print it, and we'll recoup our costs for printing, but we'll sponsor your production because we'd already kind of gotten going on... Script, we'd already scripted it, and I think the first two issues had been penciled or something when we kind of brought it to them of like... What you think of this? Nice. And like we did Comic Con in New York, and we had a zine, and we, you know, it was yeah, it was really cool. So then years later, um, Nick Lowe, because uh, I through Kobe's connections with Marvel, got to do a tour of their offices, and they're like, "Would you ever want to write something?" I was like, "Anytime you call, I'll write whatever you want." And Nick Lowe is like, "We have this Spider Verse spinoff." of a cowboy Spider-Man. And you could do the one-off issue. And I was like, yes, please. And that was so cool. And I think was pretty well received, which yeah. is nice. Iconic cover too. And then, yep, yeah. 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 And he's, then a, he's a collector over there. So. We were talking shop before, yeah. before we hit record. Um, and then they asked me to do like a full Spider-Man arc, like a four issue arc in this empire. Empire was like this, about this, planet species that came in, and then COVID. <laughs> so, so you can get some of that at the back of the compilation that came out oh. of the Empire run. Um, and then, yeah, our buddies Chris and Phil. Chris and Phil wrote on How I Met Your Mother. So okay. Phil Lord, Chris Miller, they directed 21 Jump Street, 22 Jump Street, Lego the Lego movie. movie. Oh, um, all of those are amazing, by the way. All great, they're brilliant. Um, and they're the best, and, and they did uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, Phil wrote the script, and Chris helped okay, I didn't produce realize, it. Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah, and so when they did, they did it into the Spider-Verse, and then Across the Spider-Verse, they knew they were gonna feature Web Slinger, that's Cowboy Spider-Man, mm -hmm. and they knew that I had written the sort of only solo issue of that character, and they asked me to voice it, which was That's rad. Sick. rad. It's like four lines, but it was like the but coolest thing in the world. But you're part of a comic book movie. But you exactly. and Nicolas Cage are both in the Spider-Verse together. Yeah, exactly. That is rad. Exactly. <laughs> of equal Any, anything, anything, yes. with, anything with Nick Cage. Anything, <laughs> yeah. anything to be close to Nick Cage. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, how good was his like revamp? What was the name of it? You're, he's Unbearable the, weight. Uh, of being, yeah, of talent. Massive uh, talent. Massive God, talent, yeah. such a good movie. He's a man, Mandy, have you seen Mandy? Yeah. I don't Mandy's. Think, uh, you, would, you would dig it. I'm sure I would. So he's, he, I, I'm a, I do love Nick Cage movies. I cool. always have. But I'm not the fan that he is on it. Like, I mean, I, when I was growing up, we grew up in the same time. Like, mm -hmm. The Rock, you mm -hmm. know. Face you know, Off. Raising, face yeah, Face Off. Oh, man, raising Trump Arizona, Volta, for raising sure. Raising Arizona. Peggy Sue um, got married. Do you like that? Mm -hmm. Which, That's oh, a Coppola film, yeah, but it's yeah. great. 
That, uh, uh, Kathleen Turner. If you haven't, watch it. I, I'm sure I've seen it, and now I feel bad that I don't remember it. But, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, Dude, you right. get older, you forget some shit. <laughs> yes. And whiskey helps, too. Yes. You know? yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. Mm. Well, yeah, so before someone so rudely interrupted this podcast and brought Before in a jacket. Before your custom leather jacket tailor showed up and interrupted us. We were saying, we're just like you guys. We're just people. I mean, everyone gets with a jacket. With Ed O'Neill signatures on our walls oh, yeah. and Isn't neon it? lights with our names. Yeah. We're just grounded people. So grounded. <laughs> and so excited to talk to Michael Keaton. So you, yes. you fit, So let's finish that story. Yes. So as he... When he gives the sick burn. When he gives the sick burn. And I go, he, go, he goes, uh, yeah, we're all the time too. So if you see us again, feel free to just leave me alone. Yeah. I was like, I knew it. Yep, that was my instinct. I, should, I shouldn't have come over. So have a great meal. Have a great meal. We laughed. Ha ha. We, we said, good to see you. All right, bye. And then you did leave after that. And then that. I left immediately. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was kidding, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Tell me, he was kidding. He was totally kidding. He's my hero. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, dude, yeah. that was definitely a joke. And he was in, that's his way of inviting you to sit down with yes. his family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, come stay, hang. And I didn't, I didn't read this. Social cue, How but if I, I see him again, I'll know to like send a drink over an item and just like pretend like I'm leaving him alone. Yeah, <laughs> that's my bit. Yeah, <laughs> like said, uh, this uh, appetizer platters when the gentleman in the corner said he wants to leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> just in my Batman cowl, dude. But Michael Keaton has like those. It's the eyebrows, it's the face. Like, even if he was making a mm -hmm. joke, I could imagine. Well, like, you did the teeth. I didn't even think about that. He does but the teeth. It's really teeth. You're right. A little, little lisp up top, a little soft. What was the, soft movie? What was the movie where he's the crazy renter? Uh, renter? He was, he, was, renter? He, he was like the squatter at the, at the house. Yeah, I can't. I'm gonna have to go back to this movie. Not multiple. Yeah, it was like multiple. No, no, yeah, it was multiple. Steve. <laughs> also amazing. Movie. I like Pizza yeah. Steve. Yeah, <laughs> Pizza Steve is definitely the best Steve. Yeah. Uh, no, it, what the fuck is the name of that? I'm gonna have to come back to that. Okay. Because there is a movie that if if everyone out in this room doesn't know who I, what I'm talking about, it's a movie that's definitely look it up on IMDb while you're over there, buddy. It's it's, it's it. it has something to do. Mr. With Mom. Him. What's the one where he's the gangster? Uh, that There's was uh, Johnny Dangerously. Johnny Dangerously. Oh my gosh, yes. fantastic. And the sex, the sex cartoon, I remember as a kid going, what is this? What Do you remember that? Happening? <laughs> yes, yes. Was, the sex cartoon was in Johnny Dangerously? Yeah, they watched some, like, I don't know if it was a sex ed video or something, right. and there's like a yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember Shoot, that. I don't, I don't remember that scene. Yeah. Maybe it was it was edited when I watched it on TV. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. Comedy Central did not show no. the sex ad. Animation no, there's a of, movie where he was super creepy and he's like he's like squatting at somebody's house. I heard there's a oh. what time? Pacific That's it. That's, That's it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a squat. Isn't that like it's a naval thriller? Isn't that one a naval thriller? No, 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 no. He's, no, just, no. he's, in he's the just, house. He's just a squatter and Ooh. it looks like it's filmed in like San Francisco or something like well, that. Yeah, I gotta check it and out. It's like like these. This couple moves into Melanie, this house. Melanie Griffith, that's right. Yeah, she, they move into this house, and they, to afford it, they rent a unit, and he ends up doing a bunch of creepy shit in the unit. Oh. Yeah. Cool. And, I mean, who better to he look like this? He can do anything. <laughs> he can do anything. Uh, he really can. Yeah. You can do anything, man. You're doing all these fucking voices nice. and everything. Nah, get out of here. You know? <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, absolute pleasure having you over to the Thank house. Thank you for and having us here, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I hope that we could uh, continue this friendship. And please, uh, anytime we're we're crossing paths and you want to come out to a show, bring your brother over here. You guys, yeah, hell yeah. You guys got uh, you guys got an in there for Thanks, sure. Thanks, man. But I really Thank appreciate you so much, dude. Last last days, uh, last thing to get into here is I still see the Rams. Rams okay, out let's here. talk it. Let's talk it. This will How come out. This will come out on probably Tuesday. So okay. second week will be over. What do you, what, who, who you That's guys unfair. got this week? That's unfair. We got Niners this week at SoFi, Ooh. which is always just a kick in the crotch. Um, I will, I'm, I wasn't confident coming into week one. I was like, ooh, we got, we have the second youngest team in terms of first or second year players. Mm -hmm. We have a small team. Like if I have any complaint about McVay, and I don't, and yeah, I love my coach. Yeah, he won a fucking Super Bowl. He's been to two Super Bowls, and, won and he won one. one in and the his only first one that he lost was against Patrick fucking Mahomes. So uh, uh, Brady, even worse. Was it again? Oh, it was Brady that's in right. Atlanta. It was the lowest. It was the, the lowest, lowest scoring game. It was such a boring we game. We watched it I up here, there. and I couldn't believe it. It was such a boring game. I was 
Right, I, we had great, I was sitting with Keenan, and we had great seats, and Aqib Tlaib intercepts Brady, first quarter, I was like, here we go! Yeah. yeah. Here's the best defense in the, in the league at this time. And then it just, yeah. And then Brady did his Brady magic. <laughs> we have Niners, I feel great. Stafford looks the best he's looked out of the gate ever for us, ever. He was so sharp. And the thing I was gonna say about McVay, he likes a small guy. He likes a small, fast guy. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't draft big. He doesn't right. draft size, really. It's like trade for size, draft small. I wonder where he got that from, because he's like so tall. <laughs> no, exactly. You just see his like Napoleon complex <laughs> in his sweatshirt as he's like. I know nothing about a Nicole <laughs> Napoleon complex. <laughs> I, I'm nervous, of course, and, and literally, if I didn't hate the Niners, I would be in love with Brock Purdy. I love that. What a good, what I a love good that story. player. What a great story. What a great fucking story. Oh, oh my God. So cool. And yeah, the team, again, we can hate franchises, but you sure. look at the Niners Talent team, is undeniable. It's so undeniable. They're so strong, yeah. And that's Bosa's, how I felt about like, the Rams for, yeah. for the last of years, and that's why, like, I have more confidence, as you said, after the after week one, yeah. because it feels like they're back again. Like last season, Stafford was hurt all season, totally. scrambling to find a quarterback. Two, they bring ben in Donald. Yeah. They bring in Mayfield <laughs> against my Raiders. Oh, I was at no, the game. That's, oh, jeez. Were you there? That was at a Legion. Oh, that was here. It was Taylor was there. That's right. Were you there? Taylor was there. <laughs> I, so crazy, here's, here's funny. Here's crazy funny. game. So here's, here's what's funny. We, we tailgated. We do the whole thing. My buddy takes me. We, we got great seats and everything. And I'm watching the game, and it's in the bag. And this guy next to us, Raiders fan, starts passing around a joint. And I'm like, fuck, the game's over. Fuck yeah, I'm going to hit that joint. Yeah. And I started hitting it, and then like, all of a sudden I went, no. No? Wait, wait, what just happened? And then all of a sudden I'm like, Baker Mayfield is coming back on us right now? Like, no, no disrespect to him, but it was his first time in the organization, brand new plays and everything, and does a game-winning drive two times on us. I was like, oh, that sucks. That's brutal. That's brutal. <laughs> do you, you like having Jimmy? I do. Yeah. You know, I'm sad, I was sad to see Carly, because as yeah. a fan, I think Carr just, He's a very good quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's almost, I mean, I, I liked I, watching uh, him with the Saints uh, yeah. this past I think, week. He, like, I he think that's going to be sneaky in the NFC, especially, mm -hmm. especially the NFC this season. The, yeah. ways, the way it shaped up. I mean, you still got Dallas, you still got San Francisco. The Eagles are still, still really Eagles. the team to be. And, yeah. and I, th I think the Rams are going to have something to say this, this season, too, now that they're coming back yes. and everyone's healthy. Yes. You can't forget about Donald, you know? And, Ever. No. And Cup, you, can't, you just can't forget about all that well, stuff. Well, Puka. Puka Nakua, like they he were saying, good in that they first. were saying yeah. all preseason he's got a cup vibe. He looks like Cup. He runs routes like Cup. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a what a debut. He looked he looked amazing um, this past Sunday. So yeah, I mean, as far as Jimmy G goes, again, love Carr, huge fan. I think that like he never got a fair shake. Mm. Uh, the one year with Del, Del Rio, he was going to be. Uh, hey, what's up, Frankie? Thank you. Hey, dude. How are you, man? <laughs> we gotta I like get that shirt. For... That's an awesome shirt. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you go ahead and uh, have a seat there, buddy. We're, fin we're wrapping up here in a second. Um, so so uh, Del Rio, as coach, yes. they win 12, 13 games, and Carr gets hit at the end. Yeah. Uh, they get rid of Del Rio two seasons later. Mm-hmm. And then they bring in uh, Gruden, mm -hmm. and Gruden comes in, and for all of his bad press and everything, I'm just talking it's football. A fair here. amount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I understand that. I'm not. Uh, I'm not commenting on that. Sure. Frankie, stand back, please. Yeah. You're gonna knock stuff over, Frankie. And I, actually, can you just go downstairs for me, please, for a little bit? Not that way. Not that way. Okay. Frankie, you back my there. girls love Minecraft so much. Do you play survival mode or creative mode? Yeah, that's what we do too. Wait, I think it's survival. survival with the zombies and stuff. I, I my my daughter, my youngest daughter, can't handle the stress. Sure. You're not sure. <laughs> He's only awesome. played with his cousins a little cool, bit. Cool, fun. I only played once. Do you ever play Roblox? No. Do you play music? <laughs> so cool, man. Nice to meet you. <laughs> cool, cool man. He's like. Hey, grown man, I don't know if I trust you. <laughs> you do what you talk, don't do how you know you're doing your job as a father. 
<laughs> it's so funny because we do these podcasts here, and like for so long, a lot of them are gonna be like like with Fred and other yeah. people. It's, a lot of them are gonna be over Zoom, but I have like yeah. it's fun for him again because like a lot of times I have like professional wrestlers. I don't know if you're a professional wrestling fan. But, I yeah. I appreciate it, but I'm not knowledgeable at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like he's friends with some of the guys that come over to the house and stuff. So, so like cool. it's super cool. I always joke. I'm like. Dude, when I was a kid, you have no fucking clue. If, like, <laughs> Bret Hart came over to my house, I'd be losing my yeah, shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no yeah. But it's not fair, you know? I mean, oh, like, no, you know, no, yeah, no. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not diminishing it. <laughs> sure, I'm not, sure. not at all. I'm, like, going, like, these are props as a father. I love it. Oh, exactly, exactly. Also, you the reflection just met, will be right. You just met Taryn Killam, and you don't realize it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I just met Frankie, so that's uh, how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you tell him it's a web splinger. He might know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Remember the wrong. cowboy guy in uh, Cross the Spiders? I did those four lines. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Nature Cat on PBS? And he's oh, Nature Cat. And oh he, my God, my kids love Nature oh, Cat. I totally awesome. forgot. Oh, oh cool. That's true. I love. I love being a part of that. Yeah. That's such a good. Again, family, wholesome, feel good. That's one you're gonna have to show me because that, that's not. That's not. It's a nice one. It's a yeah, nice way. He maybe has already aged out, quite honestly, because it's like for little little witchy mm-hmm. beans. But it's nice. It's a good one. I'll de- I mean, I'll check it out anyway. Nice, like, yeah. 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 Why not? You know, maybe you're I can the convince the wife to have a second one. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they can learn about nature. <laughs> Uh, so back to football real quick. Yes. We, we were talking about Gruden, Gruden, Gruden just Gruden, Gruden, football coaching strategy. Just football coaching. That's yes. all we're talking about. In the third year, they came out finally with his team, whatever that is. It was his team. Him and Carr were together, and they went four and one. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it started happening, and they lost to the Bears, which was like, at the time I was like, why are you losing to the Bears? And then literally two days later, everything came out. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's why we lost to the Turmoil. Bears. Turmoil. <laughs> and then it came, and then, you know, Carr then again went out and did what? He made the Raiders make the playoffs mm-hmm. and lose, albeit lose, but in the playoffs to the Bengals who would go on to play yes. the Rams. Yes, yes, yes. So I was like, okay, this guy's clearly not a bad quarterback. It's not, that's not what it is. He, he ended up being a scapegoat. So yeah. to all the New Orleans fans, I think you guys are going to have a great fucking season. I, undeniable talent. So good, like strong arm. I just think you got Devon, you got your guy. You got him and you couldn't make it happen. So that's it just that. Was, it, but it, did you watch Quarterback on Netflix? I didn't watch that yet, no. I watched, well, I started it. It's so good. I, I do want to watch it a little bit more, but you know. I, I gotta, watched I Kelsey. Watch Patrick Mahomes talk, you know, and like. I love it. As much as I love. Dude. I love Patrick like Mahomes, so much but more. like, God, he's in my division. He's just a happy little kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You have the hardest division because it's Mahomes. Eh? He's just a little boy and he is. Tom he's Hanks and Big. No, he's Kenny Powers. He sounds like Kenny Powers, but his energy is, is like, okay. I'm an eight-year-old boy who was growing in the best physical body ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was given a super body. I woke up one morning, and I said, I want to get that ball in the touchdown, and they give me a super body. And so I use it all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> that is his energy. Like, you if did you watch quarterback, you, you have done a great, great impression to it. <laughs> that was awesome. That might be my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just woke up, I have these shoulders super strong, I'll throw as far as I want, sometimes I throw it up this way, and it gets to the guy, and that's great, because I want to get points. Sometimes people make fun of me, and so I get points on them, and that's how I do good football. <laughs> that is so fucking he, good. He just, like, you're a good time, you're just, you just want to win, and you make it happen, and you're, I don't And it's hard to, you can't hate that. I do Dude, not hate. Yes. I yeah, do yeah. not hate. Yes. I just get sad that he's not <laughs> It's unfair. It's unfair. Yeah, it's unfair. Zoltar gave him all those powers. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Mullins got his powers from Zoltar. You heard it here first on Drinks with John. Ooh, hey, you heard it. No, so the, I think the original question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you feel about the Raiders? <laughs> How do you feel about uh, Jimmy G? So, Jimmy G, yeah. so Jimmy G comes in and looks good the first the first part. And that, that's the other thing. Like you mentioned Devontae Adams coming in. Mm-hmm. That was also Josh McDaniel's first season coaching. Right. So yep. like the scheming for everything just it's hard to it, learn it, the take, whole new it book. takes a couple yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that they did it, it just wasn't vibing, but I get it. Josh McDaniels will give him like he, he's a system guy. We'll mm-hmm. see how the system works. Mm-hmm. It didn't work for the Broncos several years ago, so <laughs> I'm hoping it works for us Raiders. Yep, yep. Uh, but seeing I do know that Jimmy G is a winner. Mm. No matter no matter how it is, you saw him in your own division. Yeah. No matter what, like they tried Very to push him out a couple winner. of times. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Man yeah. just might break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if he stays healthy, they get wins. He's, he's and amazing. if they don't, we tank for Caleb Williams. 
come on. <laughs> I literally, before Sunday, I was like, we want Williams, come on, just, just, just eat it, and let's get Williams. Eat it, let's just go. Because you- Stafford, It makes, it, I, I, honestly, great. it makes more sense. Done it. Yeah. It honestly makes more sense for the Rams to get the USC boy. Yeah. For sure, man, sorry. Yes, uh, human. Human being. Um, uh, but, I mean, of course, any any team would love to have him. Yeah. So, like, it's gonna be, yeah. It's gonna be a fight. Everyone's gonna see how they how they fare for a little bit, and then you're gonna start seeing some teams go. All right, we don't have it yet. Let's start moving towards yeah. Caleb. Um, so well, I already know what I want our next hang to be, which is like a Rams Raiders game. I would love that, but we gotta wait too long for that. Too long. Preseason. We just missed we just the preseason. Go, yeah, yeah. How do how do we? We'll, Why don't we'll we do a Rams Raiders. and do a Raiders? I'm I want to totally go to Allegiant. I haven't been there. You yet. haven't been there yet. Mm-hmm. I'm going. What are you doing in November? Broadway. What are you doing on Broadway? Spam a lot. You do you really? Oh, yeah. right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That's going to be sick. It's cool. It's exciting. Maybe I'll have to go there too. Come to New York. Dude, yeah, please hit to. me up in New York. Please. I'd love to. I love New York. We you actually mix our records all the time there, or we used to. The last one we record, uh, we mixed in the Poconos, but since 2005, City of Evil, we uh, mixed with a guy named Andy Wallace. He's an amazing mixer. And uh, we'd always go into, uh, by Madison Park right there. He had a oh, building sick. there that was. I think that's the original Shake Shack. It is. And that was the first time I, when I was 2005, <laughs> he said, go to Shake Shack. And I went, yep, you were right. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Cheese the fries? original. Oh God, yeah. Cheese fries are good. Cheese fries. And then every once in a while, they'd have like their IPA that they would do there. Sure, to, sure, sure. I'm not a beer guy. Not a beer on guy. On okay. Johnny, which is a good punctuation. That's but that's okay. That's okay. I'm like, I skipped beer and wine. I went straight to the hard stuff. You know, that's smart. <laughs> <laughs> kids, so responsible. Just skip beer. <laughs> Take it from Nature Cat, kids. <laughs> skip beer and wine. Go straight to the hard stuff. Midday. Drinks of Johnny. Anyways, I'm happy about Jimmy G. I'm happy about you being here, man. Too, I really buddy. appreciate it. Such new, a joy. new friendship here, Such man. Such a joy. Same. Thank you guys all for watching. I have to drink that because it's really impolite to have a guest drinking. This is fancy. It. Yeah, it's very fancy. It's fancy, good very stuff. Fancy. Good yeah. stuff, good stuff. Thank you, my Thank you guys very much for uh, tuning in. We'll see you next time, as always. Cheers. Cheers. Manawia. Is that how you say it in Budapest? Uh, Polynesian. Polynesian? I don't know Polynesian. It's like Hawaiian, you know. Manawia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I don't know the you language. You know where it is? <laughs> <laughs> That's a better send off. <laughs> <laughs>